And that's David Richardson who's got it teed up from Death Valley. Jermaine Stringer and Lavernius Coles back deep for the Knowles. And from Memorial Stadium, we're underway. Nice kick. And he's going to bring it from five yards deep. Stringer. And he's got some room on the side. The kicker is going to save him from going coast to coast. Richardson knocked him out of bounds. A 39-yard kickoff return by Stringer. Let's take a look at the Chili starting lineup. The biggins up front, Brandon Whitaker, Long Heaven, and Trey Thomas, who might be better than the guy they had playing there last year, they tell us. E.G. Green and Peter Warwick, the wideouts. Pearsall is the tight end. Thad Busby at the controls. D. Feaster and Abdullah in the backfield. And Florida State has been unable so far to muster any kind of ground attack this year. They don't worry about it much when they set up in the shotgun as Busby does here with a three wide out set on first down. There's the numbers last year against Clemson for Thad Busby's off to a great start again this season. Has time. On the run, pump fakes and he'll keep it. Got about seven, in fact almost nine before he's run out of bounds. And Busby working against a Clemson defense that as Gary said is no slouch in its own right. Planton White and Bromell up front. White, 94 tackles last year from that tackle spot. Dingle Abdullah, Wilson, Anthony Simmons, a two-time All-ACC performer, and some people say an All-American. The corners will be tested today. Trust me, Allen and Ward, Edwards and Fox, a lot of experience at the safety spots. Second down and one, Florida State. And it's Busby under center with Feaster, the tailback, who gets the call. Feaster heading to the corner and run down by Simmons, the man I just talked about. Brad Clemson would love for Florida State to line up and run the ball at him. They're only giving up 69 yards a game, but they probably won't see that because the game breakers of this Florida team is the wide receivers and the inexperience in Clemson is their corners. Opposite that, though, all the strength is the front seven against a young, improving, but very talented offensive line for Florida State. Simmons made that last play. Simmons and crew forcing. A third down and a long two. And already 81,000 plus on their feet for the Tiger defense. Busby under pressure, throws incomplete, and he got hit as he threw. And it's three and out for Florida State, something that does not happen very often. Tried to run a little rub play to the outside, pick one guy to the inside and rub out. Watch the outside guy try to rub inside. Ball was thrown by Thugsby, Busby a little bit before E.G. Green could turn around on the play. That's the pressure defense that Clemson said they're willing to play in this game. Florida State will look at that, I believe, and start to throw the ball deep before this first quarter goes on too much longer. Cottrell a punt, and Tony Horn back deep for Clemson. Nice kick. Horn's got a back pedal, and he watches it go all the way to the end zone. So Clemson will bring it out on the touchback to the 20-yard line, and that's where they'll start offensively. And the Chili's starting offense for Clemson. Up front, Bundren's an all-ACC performer. Halsey, 335. Gamble, Roundtree, and Postel round out the front five. Horn, you just saw, back in punt formation. He had walked with the wideouts with Hall to tight end. Brandon Strader comes out to take the first snap. Priester and Witherspoon in the backfield. Raymond Priester, the all-time leading rusher in Clemson football history. And he's still got this entire season to go. First down, Tigers from their own 20. And it is Priester. Got about three. Against a Florida State defense, as Gary mentioned, they lose guys to the NFL, and they just plug new ones in there. As Wadsworth moved from tackle to end, it might be the best there is in the country at that spot. Smith, Johnson, and Bryant on the front four. And in the 4-3, rangy linebackers. Cowart, Darrell Bush didn't play last week. He's back and healthy. And Lamont Green. And in the secondary, Samari Roll. And Tay Cody on the corners. Jackson and Smith are the safety. And there's Wadsworth lining up in that track stance. Already three sacks on the season. And here's Clemson. Air Clemson with a three-wide receiver set up. Streeter across the middle, flags down as it's a first down out to the 35 to Mal Lawyer. Pickup of 12, but let's see who the penalty's on. That's hard to believe you say an air Clemson down here in <laughs> South Carolina, isn't it? Yep. But it worked. 
Offside, Florida State decline. Well, we talked about Elon Green not being able to play in this game, but the key to this game is no matter who the quarterback is, they have to follow the game plan, and that means continuing to throw the ball. And the other thing that I think is big in this game, if you look at the matchup, is Clemson suffered through with four-year starters on the offensive line. They must be able to come through against one of the best defensive lines in college football. Tommy West told us if my group up front can't handle Florida State's defensive line, I'll be disappointed. We've been building them to this point, and for a game like this, first down, Clemson on the option. Pitch, Priest got the corner, got almost seven. And Clemson off to a good start. Troy Saunders came over from the secondary to make the stop. Against Florida State, you must be able to give guys in that defense something to think about. This time, a little bit of an option play to the outside. The key block by Tony Horn out here, the wide receiver. Come down the line of scrimmage, pitch the ball. It's like a long sweep, and you can see Tony Horn does just enough. Might have grabbed the jersey there, though, just a bit also. Got away with it, but just enough option for Clemson to keep this Florida State defense honest. The Tigers would love this second and short. And Priester's got the first down across the 45, out near the 47. Wadsworth tracked him down, but Raymond Priester with a first down run. Clemson's new offensive coordinator, Steve Ensminger, came from Florida State, I mean, excuse me, Texas A&M and Georgia, and he said, we know the type of athletes we're going against. We cannot play it close to the vest and win this game in the fourth quarter. To attack right from the start, but he said, sure would like a lot of those third and shorts. That would make it a little easier. First down, Clemson at the 46, their opening drive of the ball game. Offensively, after forcing Florida State to a three and out. Throw incomplete as Horn broke downfield, and Streeter threw it on an out. Incomplete will be second and ten. Sam Cowart bringing some pressure on Brandon Streeter, the sophomore out of Gettysburg, Pennsylvania. His dad's, his dad's a high school coach up there. Raymond Priester is going to help Postal number 70 all day on number 85, Wadsworth, right there. You see Priester come to the picture and chop Wadsworth. What Mickey Andrews will do, the defensive coordinator for Florida State, if he sees the backs helping, he'll start blitzing. He'll say, we're not going to allow you to double-team our defensive ends. And again, Clemson sets up in the spread with four wide receivers for Streeter. Brandon has time and delivers. And it's going to be a first down. Justin Watts with a second effort. Got 11. First down, Tigers. What the shotgun does for Brandon Streeter is gives him just a half a second more to get comfortable throwing the ball. And the inside rush doesn't bother him. This time, Streeter is going to go to the top receiver one-on-one -on -one against Tay Cody. Pushes him off. The ball is thrown to the outside. And then the first down by extra effort just gets the ball past the first down. Justin Watts does a nice job of catching it, running, turning up, and getting a first down. An impressive opening march for Clemson. Another first down, the seventh play of the drive. They set up at the Seminole 42-yard line. Again in the shotgun. Streeter. Throws over the middle, Tony Horn, first down, down to the 32-yard line. How about this? To put this into a little bit of perspective, Clemson threw for 250 yards in the first two football games. Florida State and Sam Coward says, I don't believe this. <laughs> when I played two years ago against these guys, it was all running. What am I supposed to do with this? It's always been about running <laughs> at Clemson until this year. To say that Clemson has suddenly found a passing attack is to say Dolly Parton's got great ankles. You know, it's something you don't notice, really. First down at the 32-yard line. Does she? <laughs> I think so. Their first 2-0 start since 88 as well. Let's look. Streeter on the option. Keeps it. Cuts inside the 25. He might go. Touchdown. for first game jitters for the quarterback. All out blitz by Florida State. The linebackers were hugging the line of scrimmage. You run the option of one guy. This time it was Coward, number one. It's out of his lane. That opens it up for the quarterback. And he may not be Elon Green, 
but he's faster than Danielson, and that's all you need. <laughs> Comes down the line of scrimmage, cuts it back, and everyone in the secondary is playing man to man before they turn around. They know he's into the end zone. So. Gonna wait on the extra point. We've got a timeout. We'll be back. Clemson with some confusion. I think they were a man short up front on the extra point team. That necessitated the timeout. Mickey Andrews just watched Tommy West's offense go 80 yards in eight plays. So the extra point now, Matt Padgett in for the point after. Seven nothing, Clemson. So let's look what happened on this touchdown right here. Here's Cowart right there. There's the free safety right there behind it. As the play unfolds, all the count corners are playing man to man. When it's overrun right here by Dexter Jackson, cut back right in there by Streeter, and there's no one back to help on the play. Just a sprint to the end zone, and they're not going to catch Streeter on this play. And after the delayed extra point, a penalty marker as well, and the officials talking about it. I think it's against Florida State as now the captain comes out and will decline it. It's an offside call again against the Seminoles. Point decline. Is Time is out. You heard it all from Jim Knight. Point is good. Time is out. It's 7 0 Clemson. This is an offense that didn't even score a touchdown last week and win. It's amazing. Lavernius Coles is going to bring it out from five yards deep as well. Hit at the 10, broke a tackle, flags down. He hurdles a man. And I think Florida State's going to start in a hole with probably an illegal block upcoming. Well, special teams, every Clemson coach that we talked to told us that special teams we have to at least tie today. Florida State just beats you in the special teams as well as talented they are in offensive defense, but we got to at least tie, and so far they are. Holding against the Knolls. And that will indeed back it up inside the 15. They'll put it down at the 12 yard line. 10 yard spot foul, first half. Brandon Streeter's first collegiate touchdown. A moment he will remember, and to do it in front of the delirious fans in Death Valley, got to be special. But he's got a lot of football left this afternoon. 10:08 remaining first quarter. Florida State will come up under center. Feaster, the tailback. And the Seminole eye, but it's Busby to throw. Pump fake wants to go deep on the sideline. Great adjustment made. The catch at the 35. It's Warwick, and he's still on his feet. Gets pounded at the 43-yard line, but he got 31 yards on the pass play. Well, I told you as soon as they saw that bump and run and tight coverage, they were going to throw the ball deep. This was a stop fade. Busby threw this ball short on purpose. You see, ball going to the outside this time. Warwick takes it. He knew that ball was going to be thrown late. Ward did not. And then you can see what Warwick does, and he is tough with the ball. Abdullah. Though everybody talks about E.G. Green, they say that guy might be the most dangerous Seminole on the field. He got a first down out near the 44-yard line. Feaster in motion. Busby wants to go out to him in the flat and does, and he puts a nice move on. But pretty well played by Antoine Edwards, one of the veteran safeties who makes the tackle out at the 46-yard line. Well, Anthony Simmons is the guy that Florida State must know where he is on every play. He's going to line up on the outside and blitz. He's going to match up in man-to-man -man coverage on Feaster, whoever the remaining back is. He's a very active football player, 4-5-40, All-American, and ready to play. I can tell. A little bit of a bruised hip a week ago, but he looks like he's running much better so far in this football game. Florida State wanted him badly, recruited him heavily, and he came to Death Valley instead, and Tommy West said, I couldn't be more happy about that. Second down at eight. Busby deep ball. And it's complete down to the 20. Nope, he dropped it. Couldn't Incomplete. Coles couldn't handle it. And he couldn't throw it any better. You see the bump and run coverage. This time Allen is in coverage. And when we talked to Reggie Herring, the defensive coordinator from Clemson, he said it's going to be a slow death if we back off and let Busby throw short all day. We're going to challenge him, and we're going to hope from some human error 
That's what he's talking about. They're going to get open every once in a while. That time, a little human error. Busby run down by Simmons again, and a penalty marker on top of it. I think it's going to be holding against the Seminoles yeah. again. And I'm sure it'll be declined. Because Simmons tracked him down, and they'll decline the penalty and force another Florida State punt coming up. Clemson's defense can run with Florida right. State. Holding. Offense. Decline. You see the series oh. and five straight that Florida State has won, four of them here in Death Valley. But Bobby Bowden, when he talked to us yesterday, knew he was in for a battle because of what Gary just said. The athleticism, especially on the Clemson defensive side of the football. Cottrell a punt again. And that's Tony Horn. He's the most dangerous Clemson player. Fourth and six. This one going to be fair caught. And now Horn's going to clear out of the way himself. Made a little bit of a mistake there by not catching it. Cost his team about five yards. And the Clemson offense will be inside its own 10 yard line when we come back. But they have a touchdown lead. Clemson leading Florida State, number 15 team in the country on their home turf against the fifth ranked Seminoles. And Brandon Streeter in place of the injured Neilan Green with a tremendous opening drive and a 32 yard touchdown run of his own has helped spot his team up by seven and they start from their own seven. All the time in motion to toss the Priester. Florida State defense can run too. Smith came in from the secondary and made the stop. Priester got a couple maybe. Raymond Priester may not be your prototype scat back all time leading rusher at Clemson. I bet he is a type of guy that goes 230 pounds. 4-7, maybe 4-8-40, but he gets you the tough yards. And with Florida State not allowing you to run the ball wide, I think it runs right into what Priestley likes to do. I expect him to have a big day. If he doesn't, they will be in trouble. Well, Florida State doesn't give up much. A yard per carry through two games to USC and Maryland. Streeter in trouble from his own goal line, but he got it out incomplete. A great final surge by Samari Roller, that would have been a big gainer. Big gainer, would have been a touchdown. Brian Wolford was behind on that play, and that ball was thrown maybe a slight half second late. Samari Roll closed on the ball. Talk to Mark Rick, the offensive coordinator, about Samari Roll, who we've seen a couple of times uh, in our career watching mm -hmm. Florida State. He said he is really coming on, Gary. He dominates practices, and he expects him to have a great senior season. Of course, a long line of great cornerbacks and defensive backs, for that matter, that have played for Florida State over the years. Here's Bush lined up right there. That's called the Bear defense for this Florida State team. Deep middle. Horn with a catch. Whoa, what a hit by Tony Horn held on. Dexter Jackson let him have it, and Streeter laid that one right on the money. When you have all the linebackers up like we showed in that Bear defense, you're going to throw the ball. There's nobody back here right here. So you just throw the ball down the seam. You know if you're the quarterback, you got to get it there quick. You see Horn get the ball, and the ball is thrown perfectly right over the corner's hands and right in front of Jackson that time, and Horn hangs on to it. That's the type of big play that Clemson skilled people have to make. While Tony Horn catches his breath, let's check in with John Saunders in New York. John? Brad, Nebraska and Washington, the big one on ABC today. This brought to you by Burger King in this update. Scott Frost, 34 yards on the keeper, outracing all of the Huskies to the end zone. They take a 7-0 lead. We'll keep you up to date. Also in the SEC, Arkansas has knocked off Alabama 17-16 that final. Brad, back to you. Well, we saw BYU score against Washington first also. <laughs> Got a little nasty after that. That's right. <laughs> Tony Horn strapping the helmet back on. He took a big shot, but he held on for a first down at the 29-yard line. Straight ahead, Terry Witherspoon, the fullback, and Roland Seymour made the stop. Clemson could not have hoped for a better start than what they're having. Florida Holding State the had that one 31-yard pass. It's their only first down. That's exactly right. And Clemson has been able to move the chains, obviously, use the passing game. When you talk to the Clemson coaches, they said, we would like to throw the ball between 25 and 35 times. I hope nobody dropped dead out here <laughs> watching this game. Clemson watching, because they're going to be in shock to know that. And they want to do it evenly from quarter to quarter. 
Three wide out group again for Streeter. Uh, second down and seven. Brandon throws incomplete intended for Tony Horn, who had checked back in after being shaken up earlier in this drive. That'll bring up third down and long. Clemson came in 39% on their third down conversions in Florida State. A team that doesn't allow many third down conversions to their opponent. Yeah, that would be that would be a in few the right there. Twenty-one percent. Uh, what do I expect here? Something conservative from Clemson. Maybe a quarterback draw. Maybe a, a shuffle pass. Something like that. They don't want an interception. They'd like to punt the ball if they don't get it. They show the four wide out spread formation again. Streeter, short pass to Horn. Boy, Tony's going to say, "Hey, Brandon, you know yeah. what?" These guys are killing me. Right. Got to get it to me quicker or don't throw it to well, me. Well, the first one he had no choice. That right. was a great throw, but this one he threw it right in the teeth of the zone that time. Tate Cody was on the outside. He should have recognized that, but hey, nothing bad happened that time. They drove it out from their own six yard line. They got it in good field position. Now the special team game starts again. And here's the fear they want to punt it and they want to average a net 35 yards. Laird to punt. D. Feaster is back deep. Nice kick. Feaster trying to track it down. It bounces at the two yard line. He had to pick it up. Now can they track Feaster down? Back across the 25 and all the way out to the 28 yard line. Boy, did a great job. A 26 yard return of That's a tremendous unbelievable. kick. Unbelievable. 64 yard punt. Monday night football coming up. It'll be in the AFC Central Division. The Steelers in Jacksonville to take on the Jaguars. Don't forget, Monday night on ABC, Time Cop goes back in time to track the world's first serial killer, Jack the Ripper. It's the series premiere of Time Cop Monday. Check your local listings for the times in your area. I could hear every coach, including Bobby Bowden, say, Dee, leave it alone, leave it alone. <laughs> he picks it up. Go, go, and, go. <laughs> and makes, what, almost three first downs on that play out to the 28-yard line. From the 29-yard line. Man has Gooch in at the tailback spot. Fumble. Clemson's got it. Howard Bartley, I don't think Busby ever had the handle on the snap. Can you imagine if that had happened on the two-yard line? This is inexcusable. Quarterback center exchange. Never really had it. It was going to be a bootleg pass, as you saw the guard pull out Donald Heaven that time. And the ball's on the ground. The center exchange between Busby and Kevin Long never was clean. And Clemson, remember, had the ball just one series ago on their own six or, what, seven-yard line? Yep. And now they have it on the 26-yard line. That's a huge play. Busby talking it over with Bobby Bowden. The Seminoles a little bit in shock right now. As Clemson trying to beat ranked teams back to back for the first time in a long time. Last week it was 25th ranked North Carolina State. Today it's number five Florida State. And they've got a 7 0 lead. Streeter to the air. Would have been an acrobatic catch by Tony Horn, broken up by Troy Saunders. Broken up by Troy Saunders because it was perfect coverage. He was in great position on the outside on Horn that time. Streeter had nowhere to throw the ball, and I thought Horn almost uh, had interference on the play from behind. So second and ten at the 26. Brandon Streeter, who has our only touchdown today, a 32-yard keeper on the option. He's thrown the ball pretty well, and it's second and long for him here from the shotgun. Four get, wide out set. Needs to get the ball to Priester. Priester with him in the backfield. Florida State showing blitz. They'll come with it. Trying to go to Priester and it's intercepted. And it's Bush going the other way. Darrell Bush to midfield. They tried to do what Gary said, but the all ACC linebacker had a different thought. If Bush doesn't make that play, it's a touchdown. They knew the blitz was coming. Priester kind of faked like he was going to block. Priester's going to come right up there. Bush stops, left hand, stick it out. Look at that. There's no one behind him, and he has a screen of blockers in front of him. Bush saves the play, and Streeter saves the touchdown going the other way. Two touchdown-saving plays on one play. Wow. 
And now the Knoll fans who are here in Death Valley have something to chop about. The team out at the 49-yard line. Bush did not play last week in the win over Maryland. Back today, healthy, and an interception return out to the 49. Busby fakes a pitch, and he's going to keep it. No, he throws on the run, and he got it there to the 26-yard line. Peter Warwick. Warwick with a diving catch. Fans thought he trapped it. It's a pickup of 25. This is the same play they were going to run when they fumbled the ball. Evans going to pull out. It's a bootleg pass with Busby coming out to the left side of the screen this time. Now watch what Warwick does on this play. He pulls up. Here comes the Busby in, and here come Warwick right into this area. Cuts back on his route. And let's see if it bounced. Boy, you can't tell from our angle. The crowd must have a better angle than us. <laughs> First down is what it is at the 26-yard line of Clemson. And the Tigers blitz. Busby running for his life, and he does well to get it out to the 22-yard line. Took the official out of bounds as well. Well, our guys in the truck say we got one more angle of this catch, the previous play. Let's see if it bounces. I think he caught it. That's I'd one of those where the effort's so great, I'd give it to him anyway. I, think, I, I just I, I agree with you. I think he caught it. He got his right arm underneath it. Second and seven in a noisy Death Valley, Dean Blevins. Yeah. We'll check with Dean in a minute. He can't hear us. He can't hear us. It's so noisy. <laughs> Second down. Busby pumps once. Wide open is wide out inside the 20. Peter Warwick, and maybe that's the reason Busby's been under center a little bit more. Let's check in with Dean now. It's a little noisy down there, Dino. Huh? What do you say, man? <laughs> hey, you know, Bobby Bowden told us yesterday with his team calling all the plays at the line of scrimmage, or most of them, that the noise is a problem. You'll watch Thad Busby. He comes up, he tells his offensive linemen what protection, then he hollers at the backs if they can hear him, then he signals to his wide receivers. There's already been miscommunication two times. We'll follow that throughout the game. This crowd is a factor. Plus, our miscommunication down to him makes three. <laughs> we got hand signals. That's though. right. Third and short. Busby to throw for it. And one hopped it incomplete. So now decision time. Does Bobby Biden go on fourth and a yard or send out the kicking unit? They're going to go for the field goal. Busby has made a number of throws right into the teeth of the rush, and this time was another one. He made some good ones, but this was too tough. Right in his face, and he couldn't step into it. Good defense. Bill Gramatica in to try the field goal. He's there with about 40 yards in, and then Sebastian Janikowski is the long ball kicker. This one's a 34-yard attempt for Gramatica. And he's got it. So the Clemson defense holds on third and one, forces a field goal, Gramatica nails it, and that's the first points of the ball game for Florida State. 7-3, Clemson out in front here in Death Valley. ABC's college football is online live with all of the action from today's games. You can get scores, stats, and highlights all on America Online. The key words, ABC Sports. Brad Nessler, Gary Danielson, Dean Levins, and our ABC crew in Clemson, South Carolina. Bobby Bowden's team just took it after the Daryl Bush interception down for a field goal. So the drive covers 34 yards and five plays. I think Bobby Bowden figured that this would be a tough start in this game. I don't think he figured Clemson would move the ball so successfully against his defense, but he knew that this was a very hostile crowd, ready to play him. A lot of players that played on this team that have suffered through four consecutive losses, so he knew they'd be ready. I, I just don't think he figured that the backup quarterback uh, would be able to rip them like that. Well, with all due respect to Ronnie Vanderlyn in Maryland, Bobby was telling us that Tommy West's troop more like the USC team they met in week one as far as being fast and uh, getting around the football. And, of course, they won that opener but had to struggle to do so before erupting for 50 points last week. Today they trail 7-3. When we asked Tommy how his players matched up athletically against Florida State, which is kind of a loaded question, you don't want to dog your own players, he said, we've come light years. That's, right. <laughs> that's about all he could say. So he felt good about the game. Janikowski, the guy we just talked about, set to kick off. And uh, 
Nine times out of ten, or in the case of last week, eight times out of nine, he won't let anybody return this. This kick is returnable. Horn at the two. Tony Horn trying to break tackles and does across the 20. Tony Horn now picks up some blockers and he's all the way to the 35 yard line. That's about as nifty a 15 uh, 22 yard return as you're going to see. Well, when you consider, like you said, eight out of nine times last week, Brad, the defense started with the ball in the 20 yard line for the opposing offense. This time, Tony Horn who's not a blazer. You know, he comes out, and this is not a beautifully blocked run back either. He makes one, two, three, four guys make a miss and gets the ball out to the 35-yard line. That's a plus 15 yards for this offense and where they wanted to start the ball, or at least Florida State did on the 20, and where they are now to the 35. I may have said a 22-yard return, a 32-yard return out to the 35-yard line. Four wide outs here. And Streeter under center, and too much time, I think, the Tigers took. And with the penalty, we got time to go to John Saunders. John? Seven three here. Clemson leads Florida State with 338 left in the first quarter. And on the penalty, first and 15 now for the Tigers. Brandon Streeter's numbers, 50% on the day. He's thrown an interception, but he's run the team well. And about three, for Raymond Priester, Sam Coward. And, and Sam's adjusting his hat right now. Number one, the linebacker. Great story about Sam Coward, leading tackler two years ago in this offense. Had a bad knee surgery, sat out a whole year, came back. Some doctors said he wouldn't be able to play, and he's come back and reclaimed that position. You know, watching the Phil last week's game against Maryland, it seemed like he made every tackle of the first half. <laughs> well, <laughs> he might have. They didn't have it very many times. Changed his number from 56 to 1 because he said that's his goal to be number one. Wants a team to be number one, and he'd like to be the number one linebacker in the country. With second down and long coming up, let's check in on some other shows on ABC. Back in Death Valley, welcome to Death Valley. I always love that sign. <laughs> welcome and to death, right? That's right. Welcome back. Brad Nessler, Gary Danielson. We I used to have a coach who said, Nessler, defense is all the way around the field, but yeah. we've had the defense well, today. Well, they got a little break in the fence right here for Florida <laughs> State. See, they're, you're going to need to repair that. That's if right. they can, they should be all right in the game. But, you know, I, I think the whole crowd is sitting here thinking, you know, wow. You know, we thought we might have to keep this game close, uh, but... Uh, Tommy West has his guys challenging this Florida State defense. They've moved up defensively, bump and run to the outside with the young defensive backs, and they say, hey, if you're going to beat us, beat us with our A game. Right, and that's what Tommy said, and they have followed that course. He said, we're not changing anything if Brandon Streeter starts and Elon Green doesn't, and certainly they have thrown everything out there offensively. I've seen this is more spread offense than I've seen from Clemson in the history of their football program, I think, since I've lived in the South, and here they are in the shotgun again with four wideouts on second and 12. Streeter, over the middle, a little bit low, had the quick slant, incomplete, intended for Brian Wofford. Well, Florida State is starting to get a, a feel for what Clemson is trying to do on those short passing game. Again, Mickey Andrews countered by dropping back into a zone and saying, my front four can put enough pressure on Brandon Streeter. We don't believe you're going to throw the ball downfield. We're going to make you throw it underneath, and we're going to hit you. We're going to hit the wide receivers after they catch it. They seem to be falling into a nice pattern defensively. Third down at 12. Just under three minutes left first quarter. High snap. Streeter can't handle it. And the ball still loose. Kicked around. Coward in the end zone. Touchdown, Florida State. That's how quickly it can turn. Make one mistake against this group, it'll cost you six. Well, you make that mistake against it'll cost you six. They're the number one defense, but when you snap the ball over the quarterback's head and then 
Nightmare against nightmare. Nobody can find the ball. Your quarterback and your best running back who's used to handling it can't come up with it. And all of a sudden, instead of being able to punt the ball, the other team gets six points on the board. That makes for a happy defensive coordinator. And a happy linebacker, Sam Coward, who we just talked about with the touchdown on the extra point by Bill Gramatica, up and good. So just that quickly, it can turn. Clemson was up 7-0. Florida State went down, got a field goal, and then on the fumble recovery in the end zone by Sam Coward, it's 10-7. Florida State in front. They rank uh, number one in just about anything in the ACC, and then you throw in the total defense number one of the country. Not bad. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, uh, there's really no reason to even telestrate anything there. You just put a bunch of ones, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, probably the best thing you could add to that is the number one recruiting class, too. That's, That's right. the scary thing. Well, Streeter who had a great opening drive, and that was not his fault, as Gary said. That snap was a mile high. He tried to cover it, and the ball just continued to squirt along the turf. Here's how it looked from behind Streeter. Ball. Jason Campbell put that ball high, a little too hard, obviously. And there's the thing. If Streeter just comes up with it, or Priester just comes up with it, at least the Clemson defense has a chance after the punt to try to slow down that Florida State offense. But now you just give them seven points. And the human error factor so far, the big one so far, has gone for Florida State. And that's not according to game plan. Mm -hmm. So, Florida State set to kick. Janikowski has got it teed up. Javis Austin and Antoine Edwards back deep. Janikowski didn't get a hold of the first one. This time he sends it to the two again, to Edwards. He got out a nice return across the 25 out to the 26 yard line. Let's check in on an injury report. Dean's got something on the sideline, Dino. Well, it's a significant injury for Clemson defensively. Adrian Dingle, the outstanding rush in, has a hamstring injury. He will not play the rest of the first half. They'll check him at halftime to see if he can return. By the way, some of these kickoffs, Brad and Gary, that you would think would be going into the stands are kicking into a little bit of a win. About five miles an hour. Just enough to hang it up there yeah. for a couple of returns. Yeah. Out to the 27 is where Clemson will set up their offense. I got to think maybe Clemson will try to reestablish a little bit of a ground attack here. They've got Javis Austin, true freshman in there right now at tailback, not Priester. Option to Austin. Oh, boy. oh what a hit. <laughs> or three hits. Four hits, five hits. He took a bunch. I'll give you even worse news than that. Florida State has their backup linebackers in there. Yeah, that was <laughs> Theon Rackley that made the initial contact. Javis Austin this time says, I'm in high school a year ago. Now I come out, I get a nice pitch, and you're going to see four different Florida State guys surrounding this ball carrier. And they are all there, broken down, ready to hit Javis Austin. There was nothing there. I give Austin credit. He kept fighting. Well, yeah, he hung in there, didn't he? <laughs> Second down and nine. Under two minutes, first quarter. Florida State now leading 10-7. And straight ahead with a ground game, and they only got about another yard as Raymond Priester back in there trying to follow Corey Halsey, his big left guard, 335 pounder, gets up a little bit gimpy. He is a wall, Halsey. He, re he really is, but that time Jerry Johnson big defensive tackle for Florida State just blew that play up he just got underneath it Clemson trying to pull someone Johnson coming he blew it up so much he yeah. blew himself up <laughs> goes jogging off the field but he just blew it up at the point of attack and Priester had nowhere to go Raymond Priester's always done well two games ago two years ago against Florida State he had a big game last year not quite as productive third and long Streeter in the pocket and down he goes first sack of the day and it's Tony Bryant. And now Clemson go the wrong way. They're going to have to put it away. Oftentimes I see defensive coordinators with inexperienced quarterbacks play a lot of man-to-man -man coverage. This time Florida State is just going to sit in zones back here. They're going to say, Brian, can you throw the ball between us, Brandon? And this time he can as the rush is only going to give you one little look. And you see all those linebackers reading Brandon's eyes. There's nowhere to zip it. Gavin Laird to punt his first one with 64 yards. 
quite as deep this time and returnable for Peter Warwick and he's dangerous but he dropped the ball and down he goes. He was thinking about what direction he was going to head and he forgot to take the ball with him <laughs> but still it's good field position for Florida State at its own 37 yard line. Bobby says let me talk to the gang upstairs. You know what now Peter Warwick gets in huddle and says guys that was just part of the plan throw it to me and I get a longer touchdown pass. <laughs> <now." laughs> So now Florida State playing with a lead offensively. First time today. 10-7 they lead with 28 seconds left first quarter. Bobby Bowden second to Joe Paterno in victories among active coaches. And again today trying to get number 200 as the head man of the Seminole. First and 10. Does beat quick drop and a quick pass outside. Got it to the 40. Five, maybe the 46 yard line to E.G. Green. That was a corner blitz that time, read by both the quarterback and the receiver. Time. There you see it coming in this way. The receiver sees him go by. E.G., a senior player, turns around and before the safety this time can get across, Chad Speck. The ball is there. That is the type of things you have to do if you're going to throw the ball a lot in college football. From that short hash, Brad, the, wi the, sh the wider hash is in, in, than in pros, he has a short run at the quarterback. You saw for E.G. Green 30 straight games with at least one catch. He got it at the end of the first quarter. 10-7 Florida State leads Clemson. As Florida State's moved it downfield to the Clemson 46-yard line. Second man through, and it's Dee Feaster who did not quite get back to the line of scrimmage. Raymond White. Knocked him off his pins. Well, this, Anthony Simmons helped out. This Clemson defense is for real. I mean, nine starters returned to this defense that averaged double digit tackles last year. I mean, that's an incredible statistic for a team. They get to the ball, they see the ball, they're comfortable with their speed going sideline to sideline, and they're ready for Florida State to run the ball. It's the, it's the defensive backs that really is the Achilles heel. Florida State has been unable to run so far now in this their third game of the season play action Busby in trouble pressured and dragged down it won't be a sack but they stop him after about a yard gain Howard Bartley made first contact and then it was Tony Planton who planted him at the 44. Well Howard Bartley's playing for Adrian Dingle right now in the, on, the, on the team Dingle out with that hamstring. Planton coming in. He had a big sack last week, too, that caused a fumble and a TD. That's right. He had the one that forced the hit that Raheem Abdullah took 74 yards for a touchdown against North Carolina State. Here's a big third down and nine at the Tiger 45. You can see they're matched up for the wide receivers. They're not laying off. They're going to challenge. And Busby's going to call a timeout as he didn't like the lineup or the noise or a combination of both and Thad Busby calls timeout. Yeah give that one to the crowd. 13 6 remaining first half Florida State leading Clemson by a field goal. <laughs> Battle of two unbeatens in the ACC Florida State number five Clemson ranked number 15. Nice matchup here E.G. Green against Antoine Edwards a strong safety. Let's see if they bring some pressure on Busby. They try to. He rifles it near side, and it's caught by Warwick. And he's got a first down. Coaches say he stepped out of bounds back at the 36. Uh, I think he did, but I think he still has the first down. And now one official. He came back and spotted it at 36. We're going to look. Matched up against David Evans this time. You see David try to pull off. He's playing zone defense to the outside. Great read. I think he was out of bounds with a catch. I don't think they well, gave him the catch. I don't know. It was awful close right there. They're going to punt. Oh, my. I think that's a bad call. Well, maybe that's one that Clemson coaches helped a little bit on the officiating. Yeah, you bet it. It happened right on that sideline, Brad. It's exactly what happened. But I thought his foot, he was in by an inch or so. Of course, I'm about 60 yards away. So <laughs> Antoine Edwards waiting on the oh, punt way up in the air but off the side of his foot bounces and takes a Clemson hop. Tigers will get it back offensively to about the 22 yard line. Let's see if we got a better look of this catch by Dunn. Well this is the one we got we're going to have to live with steps. Oh it looks like the ball hit the ground. I think the ball hit the ground. That's what they're calling. No catch. That ball was trapped. Yep, There's yep. no doubt about that. Good call by the official. 
I don't know how he called it. He might have called him out of bounds, <laughs> but he got away with it. No, he actually did go back, and they moved it back to the line of scrimmage, yeah, so, so they, they made the right call. Complete. And we had a good look. We were watching the wrong thing. <laughs> well, no, well I, actually, Brad, I think he called his foot out of bounds when he caught it. That's why I said he made the wrong call, but it ended up being the right call. Mm -hmm. First down of the 23. Hudson still trying to get something going on the ground this time. Raymond Priester got a little bit, about but, four. And that's exactly when you talk to the offensive coaches and really all the coaches for Clemson, they say Raymond Priester gives this team. He turns one and two yard gains into four yard gains. And they need him right now because when you don't have a first down since early in that first quarter, you know that Mickey Andrews has adjusted. And I think the adjustment that Clemson has to do to come back is take the pressure off Streeter and run their big man right here, Priester. Second down and six. Priester with the tailback in the eye and a whistle at the snap. Penalty markers down. Well, they're lucky they got a whistle there because that ball came free again. With 12.02 left while we look for the penalty from Jim Knight. Dead ball, false start on the offense, five yards. Let's check in with Dean Blevins. Dino. Guys down here on the sideline, Rick Stockstill, a former Florida State starting quarterback, is signaling the plays in. He's wide receivers coach. And a few minutes ago, when the tide was going the other direction to Florida State side, he talked to his receivers, saying, you know, keep your poise, guys, your composure. It's a long game. It's only one quarter. He says, if it weren't for the freak play, we'd be ahead right now. So, <laughs> hey, by the way, this guy led his team past hey, Nebraska yeah. back yeah. in 80, and that's the one game that really people look to that got Bobby Bowden over the hump. That's right. He was a heck of a quarterback. Bobby was talking about him with us yesterday. Spread here on second down 11. There's a little shovel pass Gary was talking about earlier. Priester in the open field. Out to the 39. First down Clemson. Wadsworth tracked him down from behind. Wadsworth weighs 280 pounds. And if he doesn't catch Priester this time, it's going to go a long way. 11 man on the line of scrimmage for Florida State on this play. Here comes Priester. Pitches it just before he gets hit down the line. Now watch Wadsworth. Look at him run down the back. Wow. That's some speed. Big time talent. Problem is, Streeter got hurt on a play, and I think you're going to see Neil on green. Streeter got banged big time on the right shoulder as he let that ball go. Roland Seymour just laid one on him as he let it go. And he is dazed, and his right shoulder is dazed. Is that possible? I think so. Can you daze the right not shoulder? Not quite sure what daze it is right That's now, right. I don't think. <laughs> And with the injury, we've got a timeout. We'll check on Brandon Streeter when we come back. Inside, please. Inside line. Toss sweep to Priester on first down. Raymond Priester's got it out for what looks like another first down as he takes Florida State tacklers, including Sam Cowart, with him well, you, out to the 48-yard line. You remember the shovel pass to Priester. Watch after he pitches it. Everybody took their eyes off of it, but... Whoa, Seaboard didn't take his eyes off him. You see the right shoulder he seems to be favoring. And he's heading to the locker room. Dean Blevins. Guys, I was right behind him running in. I can tell you, you know how athletes are when they know that there's an injury that might keep them out of a game. They let out a loud cry, and I was next to Streeter when he did that. We'll see what the results say from the x-rays they take inside them. Tell you what, he got one loud cheer from the fans yes, here when he, he headed out. He spotted them their first touchdown, a 32-yarder, and uh, we'll keep an eye on Streeter's availability if at all. all. False start on the off. Well, here's the regular starter, Nelon Green. And back-to-back 250-yard -back games. It's never happened in Clemson history. That tells you how much they've run the ball over the years. Well, Nelon Green is the number two guy today. That's Slade Nagel. He's going to be the number three guy. He just enrolled here at Clemson in January. He has never really even gone through one season, and he could be next. You know, this is where all the hard work that Nelon Green did all week to get ready and try to be ready for his football team is paying off. He did as much as he could. He might be 75%, but he's coming in to save the team. From the shotgun, and that's not the way you want to be rushed on your second play in. And he dropped the ball. Florida State's got it. Larry Smith, I think, covered it. And you could see Green could not move. He couldn't get out of his own shadow that time. He's used to scrambling. He scrambled nine 
times last week against North Carolina State. Wadsworth made the initial hit. You could see him limping all the way, and then Wadsworth comes back, gets the second hit on the play, forces the fumble, and then the fumble there by Larry Smith, the recovery. Two hits and a sack by Wadsworth on one play. Wow. There's going to be a, what is a penalty on the play. So forget it. All that for naught. I got to save my breath. <laughs> you getting paid by the word? What is this? Starting to sound like Vital over Where's here. Where's our flag thing? <laughs> it made a late appearance. Where's our flag? We need our flag guy. Man. An offside call against Florida State. He's giving it right back to Clemson. Second down a yard. Straight ahead with a fullback, and he's got the first at the 49. It's Terry Witherspoon. Never mind. <laughs> that old bit? That's right. <laughs> Never mind. First down, Clemson near midfield. One thing, though, that was exposed on that play, though, is if Elon Green is forced out of the pocket, he is not going to be a factor in this game. That's right. We watched him hobbling around the last couple of days. Oh, thurs Thursday, he was 50%. He was worse than James Brown was on Thursday for Texas the week before, and he didn't play. Toss to Priester. Back to the line of scrimmage, maybe got a yard. Lamont Green made the tackle yeah, for but Florida I, State. I think that was a misread that time by Priester. Lamont Green took on the blocker, and I thought Priester could have cut inside and made more yardage. Lamont Green was the prize of a recruiting pass of the past. He worked his way back into the lineup. Now as a junior year, he's finally on the team starting in the number two tackler for this defense. Second and nine. A little over nine and a half remaining second quarter. 10-7 Florida State on the toss to Priester. And Raymond got it into Florida State territory. 47-yard line. Priester, the only active player in the NCAA that holds all his schools single season, career, and single game rushing records. He just line up the big defensive end out there, and he just comes full speed. The quarterback has to pitch the ball off. But you're right, Green is the threat when he's healthy. But he's not healthy today. This is a very courageous performance, and he's out there for his team right now, Brian. Yeah. At four therapy treatments a day over yeah. the course of the week. That's a lot of them. That's what you gotta do. Third down from the shotgun. Elon wants to swing it out, and it tips. And caught by Brewster, even though it was tipped, and he got back to the line of scrimmage. Looked like Roland Seymour may have got a hand on that on the pass rush. Just amazed by the front four from Florida State. You know, you can watch them on television, but until you get in person and watch these guys work to get to the quarterback, and then after the ball is thrown, work to get to the guy who has it, they play with tremendous effort. Obviously, they have a lot of talent. They roll in a lot of guys. They keep people fresh, but they are effort football players. Kevin Laird into punt. Florida State was kind of playing it for a possible fake punt, I think. He lays one up there. Fair catch taken near the 14-yard line by Peter Warwick. So field position. Clemson playing that and a penalty marker on the play. Yeah, see, there's our flag thing right there. See, mm -hmm. that's how it works. You see that little yellow flag, and you just don't make a fool of yourself. Up here. <laughs> they let you go, and so yeah. did I. Well, it was good stuff, though. It was really good it, stuff. It was quality work right. you were doing there. Let's see. Offside, Florida State. Now, it's not quite enough, I don't think, to give them a first well, down. Well, yeah, no, but it's, it's so close that now you have to Now you start wonder. making a decision. Well, you know what I'd do if I was Tommy West? I'd line up and try to draw him off sides with one of those fourth, fake fourth down plays and see if you can steal another five. Uh -huh. And then if you get a five-yard penalty, you just punt it anyway. Tommy's still looking. Offsides, defense, decline, first down. So they're going to leave the kick alone. Let's check in with Dean on the availability of Clemson's quarterback. Actually, Streeter is still in the locker room, guys, but I did find out that the x-rays proved he had a sprained shoulder. Don't know if he returns, and the fourth, third quarterback to go in will be Slade Nagel. Back in a moment. 15-yard line. Busby, plenty of time, swings it out. Feaster on the catch. Very short game, though. Got about two out to the 15. 
Damon Ward, 22, made the stop. That time there was an absolute grab inside. Right here, left guard, Jason Whitaker, number 68, just grabs, I think it was uh, Brumfeld in front of him, Broomfield, excuse me, in front of him, and just pulled him down. Second down at 11. And the draw play's going nowhere. Simmons is all over it, so is Bartley. And the Clemson defense fired up. Let's check in with John Saunders, John. Brad, you know how good Washington's rush defense has been this year? Well, Nebraska not impressed. Amon Green takes this one in from four yards out. Nebraska leading 21-0. Brock Hewitt has been knocked out of the game, the quarterback for Washington. Meanwhile, Tony George, 88 yards on an interception return for a touchdown. The Gators up 14-0. Remember, for Washington, they have a true freshman playing behind them, Tui Asasopo. Reggie Herring, defensive coordinator, looking on. Hoping his Tigers can come up with something big here on third and 13. Busby from his own end zone. Deep middle. And down he goes, short of the first down, E.G. Green. That was a nice hit out in the open field by Antoine Edwards. Reggie Herring said, I've got no excuses for my defense. We might be a little young at the corner, but my safeties can play. And DeMarco Fox that time came up and hit one, laid one on E.G. Green, short of the first down. And everything is working so far. He's attacking, he's lining up, and he's making his front seven part of the game by keeping his corners close to the receivers. So Florida State's got to put it. on it from the 38. Tony Horn, nice return out near midfield. Ten seven, Florida State leads it, but it was Clemson early. Brandon Streeter, a 32-yard keeper on the option, put the Tigers out in front, 7-0. And they still would be in front right now without this play. An unforced error, a snap over the quarterback Streeter's head. Bounces, bounces, and Florida State's coward falls, falls on the ball in the end zone for Florida State's lead in this game. A good one here in the ACC with 535 left first half. And Clemson and Nelon Green in with Streeter out with that screen shoulder. Has good field position. Raymond Priester. And he's dragging folks for about four. And now a little shoving after the play. No flags down yet. And I guess there won't be any. <laughs> Raymond Priester, you told me the other day, he reminds you of a guy you used to play with. Raymond he Priester does. The old the Florida fullback, James Jones, who was my teammate for the Detroit Lions, a very heady, very calm, put together 235 pound guy, knows who to block and catch the ball comfortably. He's going to be a very valuable football player in the pros when he moves on. And Tommy West loves this guy. The whole team does, and the whole state does, if you're a Tiger fan, I guess. He comes out as they go to a four wide receiver group. Second down and seven. Elon Green, quick set in the pocket, now trying to scramble it again. The wheels don't work today, and Wadsworth's part of the problem. Guess who again? Holy cow. Boy, he's good. I mean, he's 280 pounds. Bullware and Wilson went about 255. This guy is a monster coming around the corner, and he just gets it. Pulls down green, pulls out the towel, and waves it right in the face <laughs> of this crowd right here. Yeah. And this one counts. That's right. Talking with Terry Bradway, the Kansas City Chiefs, the head of their scouting department, talking, looking at this kid this week. He said, I've never seen a defensive end play so low to the ground and come around that corner. And it's probably because he used to play tackle until right. they moved him outside. Yeah, got it. Third down, 14. Green. Deep middle. Intercepted. Picked off by Shevin Smith, going the other way for the Seminole. Smith with a convoy in front of it. Shevin Smith all the way down to the 25-yard line. <laughs> 39-yard interception return. Brad Nelon Green threw the interception. 
but what a tremendous effort on one leg to save the touchdown. Again, Florida State is going to set back in the zone. They say, all right, you can throw it, but we don't think you can throw it good enough downfield. Tries to get it to Horn. Chevon comes in, makes the play, but watch number 50. Takes on two blockers on one leg and makes the stop. Wow. What a courageous player. Smith with the interception, his first of the year. And there's a turnover story. And now Florida State's got it at the Clemson 25 yard line. Well, it's going to take a big time defensive stop here to keep Florida State from points. And Busby dropped the ball, covered it himself. Lost about four, though, on the play. We talked about Reggie Herring before. He was intense yesterday. He said, we're ready to play, but we're going to need some help from Florida State. We can't stop these guys by ourselves. This time, it was an unforced error from Thad Busby. The snap is perfect. He takes his eye just slightly off it to try to get his eyes downfield. And instead of first and 10 or second and five, it's second and 15. And that's what defensive coaches say you need to stop this Dolphins. As you call it, Reggie called it yesterday, the human factor. Yep. Second down, 14, just over three minutes left in the half. Busby over the middle. E.G. Green got back to the original line of scrimmage, but a nice job defensively by Clemson and Mon Wilson. You know, you know what's great about for, for Clemson's viewpoint about that penalty is it allows them to sit back in a zone. Busby to try to zip it through their defense for once. Third down, 11. Four wideouts for the Seminole. And they are dropping in a zone defense again, playing back. If Busby can hear himself think he's a better man than I right now. Flares it out to Feaster. Feaster to the 19, but well short of the first down. Anthony Simmons stayed with number 33, and it's going to bring out the field goal unit. Well, with Feaster, it's either Feast or Family. <laughs> he had a big 79-yard punt return for a Feast last year for a touchdown against these guys, but so far today... A little bit hungry yet. It's a little bit of famine. Throwing the ball out here. Remember, Clemson is quick enough to react. Nice tackle from the secondary from Michael Allen. Come up and stop that play solid and force a field goal try. Bill Gramatica hit one from 34. This is from 37. And he missed it. Oh, they love it in Death Valley. Dramatica wide from 37 yards, and it's still Florida State 10, Clemson 7. Florida State by three. And Clemson with the ball back, and Priester swarmed under by Sam Coward and company as he got back to the line of scrimmage. Don't forget at the conclusion of today's game, we'll select the Chevrolet most valuable player of the game from each team. Up to this point, Chevrolet's awarded over $6.5 million to the scholarship funds of America's colleges and university. Bobby Bowden looking for win number 200 in that garnet and gold. And right now his team in a fight for their life with a little over a minute left in the second quarter. Well, Bobby is nice to everyone, and he was nice to those guys from ABC yesterday, but he doesn't like us because the only <laughs> ACC game he's ever lost was the Virginia game that we did, and he's in for a tussle today. Here's a give to Priester, second effort. Just keeps taking people out there to the 28-yard line, about two yards short of the first down. Hey, speaking of Virginia, we're going to see them next week as they'll take on highly ranked North Carolina. Most of you are going to see that game as Gary and Dean and I will be in Chapel Hill, Ohio State, Missouri, Texas, and Rice. Check the local listings for the games in your area or call your cable operator for information on games available on pay-per-view. And don't forget, Notre Dame and Michigan, 3.30, is our national matchup, and that ought to be a dandy after Michigan's big performance against Colorado. Well, North Carolina will be in the top five before that game next week. They should be, because somebody is going to lose in those big <laughs> games today. And Priester spins off oh, first down. Great run. Great run, because he was hitting the backfield that time. Larry Smith, I think, got a hit on him in the backfield, and he just spun off of it and made a first down. And it's such an important first down because they don't have to punt and the half can end. That's right. And that'll bring the Valvoline halftime 97 in a couple of seconds here. It has been a tough defensive game. Exactly what Gary and I and Dean talked about to open this 
battle up from Death Valley? What they did was attack with their defense. When Florida State had the ball, they used their front seven, and they kept those great receivers off balance with bump coverage. And then when Clemson had the ball, as that one goes out of the thing, they used no matter who they had at quarterback, and they put the ball, they ran the ball, they threw the ball 14 times in the first half, and that's why they're still in this football game. They followed the game plan. Their offensive line has fought, and they really have out this first defense from Florida State and in the all-important uh, kicking game and special teams the slant of this field has been pretty even Clemson hoped to win the kicking game and by our stats it has gone at least towards Clemson so far in the first half so the Tigers will work first and 20 uh, first and 10 from their own 20 to start the third quarter and the left side it's Priester got about three we take a look at our Dean Witter halftime statistics. And you see the points off turnovers down there, Florida State, in a game that was dominated time-wise by Clemson. Yeah, I think that's a big one. You know, you would think with those turnovers that Florida State would be dominating it, but it didn't happen that way. Five-minute, almost a six-minute advantage for Clemson with three turnovers shows you how tough that Clemson defense was in the first half. Second down at seven. Elon Green, back to pass. Tony Horn. And Horn got it out to about the 27. Run out over there. Tay Cody knocked him out. Florida State, third quarter this year, and the last eight regular season games haven't allowed a score. That's amazing. Well, that shows you why Mickey Andrews was the college assistant coach of the year last year, because halftime uh, adjustments made by Mickey Andrews means that that team can stop people in the third quarter. Third down and three. Perhaps you would love to open up with a first down here on their opening mark for the quarter, and they'll get it. Wow. He may not be fast, but he's one tough cookie. One tough cookie, a team that only gave up 30 yards, 36 yards a game rushing, one yard per carry in the first half. This offensive line really opened the hole. This time it was Bundren. Remember, this Clemson team lived with these young guys four years ago, and now Priester's running behind fifth-year seniors and guys who have a lot of experience up there. Postal, Bundren, and Roundtree. 62 yards now for Priester on 12 carries. First down just inside the 35. And it's Priester again on the counter. And if he could have kept his balance, he'd have had a big gainer. But he stumbled a bit coming out of the blocks. Sam Cowart made sure he'd got no further than the two yards he picked up. Well, you're not going to judge Raymond Priester by long, pretty Barry Sanders type <laughs> runs. He's going to pound it up in there. He's going to make tough yards. And the thing you love about him, if you're an offensive coordinator, Thing in late in the fourth quarter as he does in the play early in the first half. Priester will get a little breather. Austin comes in at the tailback spot. On a second down and eight. Toss to Austin. And Javis Austin only got about a yard as we check in with Dean Blevins. Guys talked to both the coaches. Tommy West said, you know, he says Streeter is out with that separated shoulder. We're going to go with Nelon as long as he can go. And, to, and if he gets into a position where he might re injure himself, he has to go with the rookie we talked about. He also said that uh, turnovers, obviously the difference, as you told the uh, audience a few minutes ago. Bobby Bowden jumped all over his offensive line during halftime. He said, come on, offense, what are you doing? You want the defense to win this game all by themselves? Wake up. Well, he's got a younger group in there on that offensive front that he's had in some time. Third down and six here for Clemson. High snap. That was almost a disaster again. And because of that, the timing of the whole play thrown off and Green's high intended for Justin Watts. That one looked... Remarkably close to the snap that went over Streeter's head earlier that uh, caused a touchdown. It did, and they're very fortunate to be able to come up with this one. Green, if he was a, lined up a half a foot farther back, would have never gotten that ball because it was at an angle over his head. And the Florida State defense, as Bobby Bowden said, might have to win this game. Warwick back, punt return formation. They've got 10 guys up. Let's see if they try to put some heat on the punter. 
Well, they back away. And Richardson hit another beauty. Warren, great catch over his shoulder at the seven. And here he comes the other way. And he fumbled. Clemson's got it. Warwick may have tried to do a little bit too much on that punt return. Well, you wonder why Dee Feaster's not back there. He had the big play a year ago against these guys. Peter Warwick shows he's not Warwick done in this one because he takes it up inside, actually has a pretty nice run, but then right at the end, it's stripped out, the ball becomes loose, and a huge play by the special teams. Mond Wilson is the guy who caused the fumble, and Clemson is in perfect position to put some points on the board. That was Lamont Hall, the tight end on special teams, who covered it. And a golden opportunity for Clemson now, offensively at the 28-yard line of Florida State. Special teams can make a difference. Green, back to throw. Wanted to go deep, comes back to Horn, and Horn down the sideline. Tony Horn, a spin. Touchdown! A sideline circus show for Tony Horn. 28 yards, touchdown Clemson. Are you sure these orange helmets are Clemson or is this Florida? <laughs> Best cover guy on the team this time. This is the tackle. Troy Saunders misses the tackle in the open. And Tony Horn makes a ballet type run down the sideline to take it into the end zone. You are watching some shocking play from Clemson. Matt Padgett in for the point after. He's got it. Clemson back in front. Tony Horn takes it to the end zone. It's the Tigers by four. Rick Stock still talking to the man of the hour right now, Tony Horn, who just took it from Milan Green on a quick out and quickly went 28 yards for a touchdown. When you make something happen like this, when you get the ball and you're a wide receiver, somebody has to miss some tackles. Three missed tackles on this play. It's a one-yard pass. First, Troy Saunders misses. Then Dexter Jackson comes up, misses. Then Samari roll number two misses. Then Dexter Jackson misses right there. And Tony Horn says, you know, this is not bad playing against these guys. And this is I what led. nine catches last year, and a big fumble on the punt return turned the game around, maybe, for Clemson. That's what led to it. Lamont Hall's fumble recovery one play later, a 28-yard touchdown pass to that man, and it's 14-10. You know, Brad, when Tony Hort had nine catches against Florida State last year, you might say that's in a losing cause. They had to throw the ball. Today, it's part of the regular offense. Remain Stringer at the nine. Up to the middle of the field, buried under at the 27. And it was Harold Means on the special teams who made the stop. So now for the second time today, Florida State has to play from behind, trailing 14 to 10. Remember, this team, as Gary mentioned earlier, has only lost one conference game ever in the ACC. That to Virginia. Bobby Bowden's not worried about win number 200 in his Florida State career. He's worried about getting out of Death Valley with his life in a victory. <laughs> Melvin Pearson, the big tight end, has not caught a pass in this game. He's the leading receiver. I'd be surprised if they don't start going to the tight end. Time out. Too much noise, too much confusion. They're loving it in Death Valley. Fourteen to ten. Long way to go. Eleven forty-one left third quarter. Three wideouts for Busby. There's his numbers on the day from the shotgun. Looked like maybe Clemson was offside. Busby throws incomplete. 
intended for Lavernius Coles, but it looked like Clemson jumped offside. Unless they were drawn off. Flag down. Fred, you know, sometimes when you don't mention guys' names, they're doing a great job as we look at this penalty. Michael Allen, number 10, the bottom of your screen here, is going to drop into zone, but both Key and Damon Ward have not been mentioned a lot as corners. That's good. Yeah, that's good. Because <laughs> they're back there doing their job. This time he comes up and slaps his ball at the last second away from Coles, and all day he's He's a very fast player. He's very new to it. He's been playing a lot of tailback before. And uh, even though he's had a little bit of a tender hand this year, they say he's a very dependable quarterback, just lacks experience at it. 3-5 there for Florida State. It was Lorenzo Bromel offside. And it's first and five. There's the penalties today. From the fourth against Clemson on the afternoon. Busby to throw, going deep sideline, and it's caught. Inside the 30, and it's Warwick. He made a great adjustment. It was good coverage back there by Antoine Edwards, or at least looked like it. Well, you, you can't cover any better than Demond Ward that then did the outside corner. But Peter Warwick is acrobatic. He goes up and gets this ball. He has a 37-inch vertical, a Michael Jordan-type vertical, and he just goes up over Ward on a ball that, again, was slightly under throw, and then he comes back and grabs a face mask. But that was just wonderful. Peter Ward making up for his fumbled punt return earlier in this third quarter. You saw Ward get the hand of the face mask, and so they walk it off further downfield out of the 24. And for Warwick, a career-high day already, 101 yards on four catches. That 25 a pop, that'll move the sticks in a hurry. Yeah, you're right. At the Clemson 24-yard line. Busby lays it out sideline to work again. He goes out of bounds after about nine more. The work five catches on the day. Amazing when you think about Peter Warwick being such a big time player. Remember that it, he was from the same class as Randy Moss. As Florida State is really going to go a quick huddle here, they pick up the first down on a quarterback sneak. Straight ahead for Busby. First down, as Gary said, and they move it inside the 15 yard line of Clemson. Ellen Pyle just inside the 14. And again, they go without the huddle. This is where the fast break offense really gets a defense down. When you get a big play, people start to look at each other, and that's when you really put the, the fast break. It's like basketball. You get the press going, you get a couple turnovers, the press seems like there's eight guys out there. <laughs> Reggie Herring, the defensive coordinator, trying to urge his troops on. They're backed up to their own 14-yard line. Feaster in motion out of the backfield. Busby to the end zone. It's knocked down. Raheem Abdullah got a hand in the way. He's 6'6", 230, and he went airborne and knocked that one away. Busby misread that. He's bump and run at the look. Abdullah goes out, searches out the wide guy, makes the play. Ball again was going to be thrown to Peter Warwick on the slant. Now Florida State will go into a huddle. And the other thing Reggie Herring was telling us yesterday, he says, Tactically, it doesn't bother us that much because we're not a team that huddles on defense. And you can see yep. Clemson stayed out there. They never did get in a huddle. And now they watch Florida State come up to a second and 10 at the 14. Seminoles trail by four. Draw play on the shotgun. And it's Fisher, and he nailed at the 10. Oh, what a hit. DeMarco Fox is having a great football game. He had the big hit on E.G. Green earlier to save a first down. He is the weak side supporter. Reggie Herring told us that he is the best tackler to secondary. And he likes him to stop away from the tight end because he can run up and fill those lanes. And he showed exactly why he plays free safety. A extremely physical football player is the scouting report on Fox. And Florida State inside Clemson's 20 today has only a field goal to show for their efforts. Here's a third down and a long five. Busby. Complete. I don't think it's a first down, though. No, I don't think so either. It's going to be a yard short. Damian Harrell made the catch, but it was good defense again by the Tigers to track him down. And if they spot this outside the five, it's not a first down. 
Michael Allen again in coverage, pressing all over the field. A good stop to the outside. And I'm not surprised Florida State is going to try to get a field goal and make this a field goal win for them should their defense hold on. Come on, come on. But Brad, as you said, a big Check stop again by the Clemson all defense. Janikowski now, he's going to do all the field goal kicking. It might be for the rest of the year. Remember, Gramatica <laughs> missed one earlier. Yep. So here's the big leg, the true freshman. Trying a 22-yarder. And that quiets the crowd momentarily. But what a great stand by the Clemson defense. After giving up the big play to Warwick, they hold Bobby Bodden Seminoles to a field goal. 9.04 remaining in the third quarter. Janikowski's field goal has cut it to 14-13. Clemson in front. Home Depot brings us our Chalk Talk. Let's take a look at this week's Home Depot Chalk Talk. Bobby Bob, part of that. How about 272 wins career, as we said, at Florida State. Looking for number 200 today. And, of course, the whole family, our coaches, Terry and Tommy and Jeff, and they all had something to say to the old man today. Good luck on your 200th attempt. I just wish I was a little closer to you. Hey, old man. Good luck today going after victory number 200. I know it's going to be a tough game, but if you have any points to spare, I could use some tonight against LSU. Keep on having fun. I love you. I wish Dad a lot of luck getting that 200th win. I hope he goes for 300. Bobby probably agree with that, I think. He'd take it. Like Joe Paterno, having too much fun doing what he's doing to ever give it up, it seems. And what a coach and uh, what a program that uh, he's put together over the last 20 years. And everybody talks about Michigan having the toughest schedule in the NCAA this <laughs> year. But if you look at this Florida State schedule at USC, you got to play Miami and Florida every year. You got to go to Clemson, North Carolina. That's a tussle. Janikowski fueled by his first uh, field goal of the day, knocks this one all the way out of the back of the end zone. I mean, you look at who they have to play year in and year out. I mean, you're always going to get Miami, and you're always going to get Florida. So your breather is USC. <laughs> <laughs> they like to play the best, and that's how Bobby built this program. And, you know, sneak-ups in this thing is NC State. Everybody thought, you know, that was a team. Virginia at Virginia. Remember, right. that's a game that they had lost before. The ACC has been lifted in quality by Florida State's play. And Tommy West told us yesterday, absolutely, you have to play better. You're going to get killed. From the 20 now, Clemson with a one-point lead, just under nine to go third quarter. Bush thinking about a blitz. On the option, it's Priester. He needed a block out of the corner and didn't get it. He still got about four, though. They'll bring up second down and six. Clemson schedule as they are 2-0 for the first time since 88, remember. And their schedule looks like this. Georgia Tech coming up next Saturday night in Atlanta. But you know, if you also look at the schedule, one thing sticks out. Florida State at home. North Carolina at home. And Virginia at home. Maybe their three biggest games all at home here in Death Valley. Maybe their best chance to put together the season that they want. As you look down on the field, and I think it's Roland Seymour, is down with cramps. It is very hot, and even though you run a lot of players on the field at the same time, it's still a very intense game, and you're going to have to play a lot of guys. Oh, hope, Ouch. hope he didn't touch the wrong thing. In a bad on, spot there. He's on national television. <laughs> <laughs> it was about 93 when we were on our way over to the stadium today. Tomorrow, uh, next week, I should say, the stadium we'll head to is in Chapel Hill. That's where Dean and Gary and I will be for another big ACC game, Virginia, North Carolina. The other regional games you'll see, and then it's Notre Dame and number nine, Michigan. And be sure to check the listings for the game in your area or what you can get on pay-per-view. And coming off gingerly is Seymour. Roland Seymour, one of the 33 different freshmen that saw action last week against Maryland. Either true freshman or redshirt freshman, <laughs> whatever you want to say. 33 of them played. They had nine guys that were freshmen or redshirt freshmen playing defense at one point late in that game against Maryland, and uh, that's yeah. experience that you, you yeah, just you know, love to have. Yeah, because they, they were, you know, they were so young, they were looking for the yellow school bus after the game <laughs> to run to. 
Well, 11 players on this Clemson team from the talent-rich state of Florida. Three players from Florida State are from South Carolina. And now it's Clemson second down at a long five after Seymour went off injured. Florida in a blitz look this time. This time it's a first man through on the option. And Terry Witherspoon got about two. Sam Cowart made another tackle. Brad, running the fullback against Florida State is akin to throwing the ball long against some teams. You must keep those linebackers at home. They run so fast, sideline to sideline, that every once in a while, you gotta just sacrifice a play and say, we're gonna take one or two yards, and you gotta make sure you stay home first and respect that guy before you start chasing down our backs. Elon Green playing on a bad foot. Third down and two, took over for Brandon Streeter, who started the game for Clemson because of Green's injury. Takes the toss, and down he goes. Wadsworth all over it. Man, he's quick. Uh, I watched a lot of football, and I thought Peter Bolwer last year couldn't dominate a game more than he does, but this time, watch this man. Remember again, he's close to 280 pounds. Halsey comes out and cannot handle him. He gets there too quick. Neilon Green does not have the great quicks, but I don't think if he had three good legs, he would have got away from him this time. Another great play by the defensive end. Punt coming up for Clemson. They just got it away. Fair catch. Feaster will field it at the 41-yard line. If you make a mistake at Florida State, and they got another guy to take your space. Warren <laughs> makes a mistake. Feaster punt. starts returning punts. And good field position now for the seven holes. Total yardage. We told you it was going to be a defensive day. Look at that. Incredible defense. On both sides. Gucci in at the tailback spot right now. Busby on first down wants to throw. Wants to go deep and now comes back to the near side. Warwick again. And again a first down. Out to the 11 yard, uh, 11 yard pickup. And he got it inside the midfield stripe. First down out of the 47. So uh, Thad Busby trying to move. Yeah, Brad, State down I got a quiz for you though. In 13 games, if you're the FSU quarterback, how many games do you have to win to be accepted? Uh, you got to win all of them. Yeah, you, you got to win 13. <laughs> you got to win more than 12. 11 and one's not good enough last year. <laughs> Two and zero this year, and trying to bring his team from behind now. With 6:45 left in the third. On first down, play action, deep ball for Warwick. He got it, oh and he'll score. Touchdown. Oh my. How many acrobatic catches can one guy make in a day? 48 yards for the score. I, I think you ought to try some more. <laughs> because that's the third one that he's had a chance to do this. And on third time, he's done it. Perfect covered by David Evans. Watch this. He turns around. No interference. And it worked. Just goes over the top of him. The ball was put in a spot by Thad Busby where Warwick can make the play. And Warwick did. And now let's see if Florida State's going to go for two. Busby stays in. Oh, Peter Warwick says, come on, I want to take my helmet off. You know, I couldn't do it on the field. <laughs> I'm tired. 19 to 14, a five-point difference. Bobby Biden would like to make it a touchdown difference. Let's see. Two-point conversion attempt. Coles, Green, and Warwick, the wide receivers. And Busby calls timeout. That's the second one Florida State has used. You know why that happened that time, Brad? The guards lined up on the wrong side. How often does that happen? The guards cause a timeout. <laughs> they might have a changing of the guards if it happens again. <laughs> Busby will go over and talk things over with 6.32 left, a two-point conversion coming up. Busby again sees bump and run to the outside. David Evans has great coverage. Peter Warwick is not open, but when you throw the ball up and you've got great 37-inch vertical jumping on the outside, Warwick goes up, makes the catch. And Brad, can you imagine again, had Randy Moss stayed here with wow. Florida State, what those two guys bracketed would have looked like. Yep. Clemson this time, 
Playing man-to-man -man free coverage. Evans knows he's got help, but he also knows if the ball's thrown to the outside, I'm only five foot eight inches tall, and that guy can jump higher than me. Warwick continues to just add to a career day. 169 yards. And Florida State's down to one timeout, having used one earlier, remember, in this quarter. And now this one before the two-point conversion attempt. Yeah, and it's not going to be a factor unless towards the end of the game they need those babies. Uh-huh. Well, they want to get up seven, so if they get this two-point conversion, maybe it's worth it. Otherwise, it's not going to look so hot. Same set of receivers that we told you about, and the tight end is There's Warwick right there. Busby, and he got it in there to Coles. Good for two. Penalty markers down. Yeah, I think Damon Ward that time had great coverage for interference, and he still stuck it in there. They're going to decline it. Laverne is Coles on the quick slant. Busby laid it in. And it's a seven-point Florida State lead. Pass interference. On the defense, decline. The points are good. You see Ward at the top of the screen matched up on Coles, man-to-man. -man. Good coverage. He reads it, does as well as he can, but there's the interference. He's got his jersey. He's got his hands all over him. Now look how good a throw this is. Right on the bottom of the seven. Can't throw it any better than that. Coles with great concentration. One of the toughest passes to throw is a quick slant from shotgun, especially when you have Anthony Simmons coming right in your face as you let it go. Busby steps right into it and throws a strike. Fastball right in the strike zone. And a two-point conversion is given Florida State. A touchdown lead, 21 to 14. With six minutes and 32 seconds remaining. A two-play drive, 59 yards. Of course, the majority of that drive was Warwick on a, another acrobatic catch for the touchdown. Busby with a smile, afforded a smile now with a seven-point advantage for the first time today. I don't think it feels so far like Clemson feels like it's slipping away, but it's getting to that point where the athletes are starting to make the plays. and. As the kids slide down the field, you hope that Clemson doesn't feel it sliding and slipping away. That's right. <laughs> Clemson on September 19th has never lost. If this would be leap year, yeah. this would be a shoe in. That's right. You don't even have to play. They're not playing badly on the 20th either. Seven and two, trying to make it eight and two, and it would be a huge, huge win. And would really Shake up the ACC in the country if Clemson could come from behind now and win this. And whoops, he stepped out, didn't he? They're going to say touchback. Thought he stepped out of the end zone. It's the ball in college football, not the foot. The ball was behind the line. He was very fortunate that time. Austin was. But remember, it's the ball. Tony Horn is saying, stay, stay put, stay, stay put, stay, stay put. Now, the foot pro, you're out. But that ball is behind the line, and that's the way it's called. So they'll bring it out to the 20. Yep. Let's check in with Dino. All right, great call up there, Gary. I love that. <laughs> to the point. You know, Tommy West points to Florida State as the program where he wants to get this Clemson program. But he knows he doesn't have the ready-made high school All-Americans like Florida State. And he believes his coaches must help the kids grow into players. West ingrains the slogan cat into his players. C stands for conditioning. The A stands for attitude. And the T stands for toughness. And, you know, each year he's signing more and more players that he goes head to head with Florida State, but he's not quite there yet, guys. Well, this group of cats is only seven down from the 20. Tigers trail and knocked back for a loss is Raymond Priester. And it's Jerry Johnson this time from his defensive tackle spot. Jerry Johnson is a guy who came to Florida State as a big nose tackle, weighed almost 300 pounds. But he got on the weights this year. His bench press is up to 500 pound bench press, and he dropped down to 280 pounds, and he's become to be an impact player inside. You either get ready to play and compete at Florida State, or you'll watch from the sideline. Well, they just bench press one of those guards right into the backfield and dropped yeah. Priester for a three yard loss. 
Nelon Green having a look. Three wide out offense. Looks like he's changing things up at the line. He'll give it off to Priester. Broke one tackle and got back near the original line of scrimmage, but it's Johnson on the bottom of the pile again. Priester, you know you, tough sledding today. You bet, Brad, and you know you try to get there quick, but this time Tony Bryant, number 40, gets there so quick that he beats the guard. He's in the backfield before the guard can pull and get through the hole. That's the speed of Florida State getting back there and making those plays happen in the backfield. And now Elon Green on a will work from the shotgun. And I think the Clemson coaching staff took a timeout from the sideline. Got the linesman's attention and a timeout called. You know what, they had the wrong personnel out there. I think they had a play called with maybe four wide receivers, and they only had three of them out there. Monday Night Football, don't forget. Cordell Stewart and the Pittsburgh Steelers will be in Jacksonville against the Jaguars. The AFC Central Division matchup. Alan Frank, Dan, and Lynn will be there to bring you all the action on Monday Night Football. As Clemson now has used one of its timeouts. And a third down and a long 10. That football tucked inside the 20-yard line. Tommy West might be upset with the lack of substitution and people being on uh, awake on the sideline, but no one on this staff can be upset with the play of Clemson today. They oh, have been in position. They have been there. They just have outstanding athletes from Florida State also making some plays at the same time. They have been ready to play. They've been in assignment perfect, and they've played tough all game. Four wideouts now for Green. Four-man rush for Florida State. Green loads to Horn. First down, Clemson to Tony Horn. Out to the 37-yard line. As they move the sticks, we check in with John Saunders. John. Brad, Washington is trying to march back at home against Nebraska. This touchdown from Marquez Tuiasasopo to Mike Reed. Jerome Pathan with it, Pathon rather, with a 53-yard reception. Set this up. He has 195 yards in receiving. Back to you. Wow, that Pathan kid is special. Yeah, Pathan is, is maybe more acrobatic than Warwick, if you can believe that. 17-yard pickup on the last one on the first down. 11 men at the line of scrimmage for Florida State. Option, Priester. Boy, that speed. Tony Bryant this time, the other defensive end, and he's cramping up a little bit after running down Priester. Well, that, that time, that was... Tony Bryant at the end. He's an option play. They have the first guy. This is the quarterback's fault. He's supposed to get tackled on the play right there from Tony Bryant. Watch. Bryant forces the pitch, and then he runs down the field. I think if Nelon had his quick feet right there, there you go. there's no way that Bryant can make that play. I was just going to say, with Nelon in there, the option is really not an option today. He's not going to carry the football right. much, and Florida State probably knows that. Right now, Ed Altman just wants to get it in Nelon Green's hands and then try to hit somebody. And he did, and it's play action. And Nelon going long just overshot his intended receiver Tony Horn and the folks here in Death Valley wanted a pass interference call on Samari Roll and didn't get it Samari Roll did a good job that time of staying with Horn who might not be 4-3 but he's in his own right has shown that he could be acrobatic when it is new center put Corey Simon right on him Comes in, Altman does a nice job of switching off one guy, picking up Lamont and Green, and Neon Green found Green on the other side. And now it's third down at 10. And they'll work from the shotgun, and this will be Altman's first shotgun snap. So watch this one. And the shovel pass almost intercepted. That's a dead ball right there. Incomplete pass. You can pick it up and run all day, but it's an incomplete pass. It still was the penetration inside. I think it might have hit Glenn Roundtree right in the back that time. Daryl Bush says, come on, I thought I had another big play. Yeah, he went all the way to the band, the Florida State band in the far corner, thinking he had a touchdown. Great pressure inside that time. The ball hits it. That time it was Jerry Johnson again coming off the line of scrimmage at his tackle position making that play blow up before it gets started. And as soon as that one hits the ground, it's a dead ball. So it's fourth down 
And a punting situation again. Kevin Laird's had some big kicks today. He'd like to nail one here, I'm sure. Yeah, I tell you, this might be a time when you might reverse the fumble ruski play that uh, Florida State pulled off. Yeah, it's a ruski. Well, he hit it a mile in the air again. Warwick's camped under it, though. Look out for him from the 15. Warwick. Taken down at the 25, a 10-yard return of a 47-yard punt. <laughs> you could tell those guys trying to come from behind and strip that ball. Yep. They did it once, and it helped them to a touchdown a play later. Florida State on the field position today. This time they'll start from the 26. Thad Busby who threw a perfect strike to Peter Warwick. The last time they had the ball, now they're playing with a touchdown lead. As Gary said, if you're punching, you need maybe a big play by the defense, or this thing might start slipping on them a little bit. Play fake, Busby rolls, watch the throw. And he does. Is he inbounds or out? Inbounds at the 35-yard line, close to a first down. Khalid Abdullah that time, the fullback, just kind of went downfield, saw Busby in trouble on the bootleg play, and just found an opening, and Busby knows, hey, I'm not going to make a living running the ball. I'm just going to keep my eyes downfield, and made a play out of nothing that time. At almost nine, second and short. Reggie Heron, one hard-working defensive coordinator today. Short yardage, they don't get it. Gooch drops, actually for a loss, it looks like. Well, Bobby Bowden made the statement that Florida and Steve Spurrier stopped, taught me something last year. You can win the national championship without running the ball. You can see what happens today. Third down conversions 0 for 7. I think Florida State is going to have to run the ball better than this to get into that national championship hunt again. Right now, the closest thing they have to a running play is throwing a little pass over the middle of the tailback who sneaks through. They haven't done that much today. Clemson's defended it well. Third down, a long one. Busby. That one is intercepted. And it's Ward off the deflection. Tipped by Edwards, picked by Ward. And Clemson does get a big play from its defense. Antoine Edwards was just sitting there low. Busby again thought it was man-to-man -man coverage, thought he had an easy throw. Edwards ran out underneath it. And Ward says, finally, <laughs> something good happens to me. I've had good coverage, and finally, it lands up in my lap. I've been so sick of looking at number nine. I like looking at the name on the football yeah, instead. That's right. I tell you, this Clemson defense has pitched basically a perfect game. Yep. When Florida State has made plays, they've just outjumped them. Now it's up to the Clemson offense, though, to get something in gear from the 44 Florida State. Toss, Priester. He had to break a tackle just to barely get back to a one yard loss. That's the speed and the penetration again of the Florida State defense as we check in with Dean Blevins. Well, they're dropping like flies down here. Jason Gamble, the center, has gone back out. He has a knee problem. He worked around for a couple of minutes, and he was questionable. Then the crowd roared. He goes back huh. in. We'll see how long he can stay. Also, Dee Feaster is gone to the locker room. He has a rip problem. We'll find out after x-rays if he can, can return for Florida State. All right, Dino, second down and 11 as Priester lost a yard on that last play. And they go back to the four wide out look. And they'll work from the shotgun. Priester this time flanking Neilan Green in the gun. Everybody up close for Florida State. Here they come. Green, deep sideline for Watts. And he made a catch. <laughs> I'll tell you, you there's nothing you can say. Elon Green knows he's got man-to-man -man coverage out there. Samari Roll says, I got you, man. I got you. I'm all over you. He's not going to throw it. What? How could he throw that ball right there? Did he and say it, what or did he say Watts? Wa Watts. <laughs> what? Now, remember, in college ball, you can push the man out of bounds, but Watts got his right foot down before he was pushed out of bounds. That was an excellent call. What a catch. 
And now it is Clemson in the Florida State red zone at the 19 yard line from the gun over the middle. Not a nice catch. Nope, they're going to say incomplete. I thought he caught it. It was Brian Wofford that time. Incomplete. You know, Neilon Green is, is so impressive in this game. Remember, this is a guy that barely threw the ball for three seasons here for Clemson. Steve Edmonser comes in as the new co coordinator, says, I got to find somebody to throw the ball because Tommy West hired me to be more balanced. And look the way he's throwing the ball today. FSU's red zone defense haven't allowed a touchdown yet. Becky Andrews is hoping that stat stays alive. Second and 10. The ball just outside the Florida State 18 yard line. 21 14, Seminoles lead. Green going to the end zone for Horn. He says he was pushed in route and no flag as he got tangled up with Shevin Smith back there in the secondary. Remember, Shevin Smith is playing because Sean Key. Her starter is not suspended. Shevin Smith is way up at the top of the screen. He chucks him before the ball is thrown. In the pro game, you can only do that five yards near the line of scrimmage. In college, you can chuck him anywhere as long as the ball's not in the air. Great play. Well, he chucked him right back to the 18-yard line where it's third and 10. And there's what Clemson has done in the red zone this year. But that was a far cry difference that was against North Carolina State and they couldn't get into the end zone today they're looking to to try to tie it Horn almost picked off by Dexter Jackson they're hundred percent like the statistics said but only one of them was a touchdown three field goals yeah. you need more touchdowns for every time you get inside the 20 I think one touchdown for every five times you get inside the 20 which is what it is now is not good enough this one's not quite automatic either. This is about a 36 yard attempt by Matt Paget, who hit the game winner against North Carolina State in the final 19 seconds last week. It's going to be a 36 yard field goal attempt to try to cut into Florida State's lead. Paget, and he's got it. 126 left in the third quarter. And Clemson gets something out of that interception by Gamon Ward it turns into a 36 yard field goal for Matt Padgett. 21 17 Florida State in this one and don't forget a lot of college football action continuing next week. We'll start things off. Ohio State Missouri Texas and Rice will be in Chapel Hill against the top five North Carolina team against Virginia then it's Notre Dame against Michigan as Michigan rolled big on Baylor today. And the ninth ranked Wolverines. That's a 3.30 game. Check the local listings for the game in your area or what you can pick up on pay per view. Bobby Bowden up by four with 125 left third quarter. Well, Clemson needed that, Gary. Something. They did. And you, you got to give uh, Florida State good credit there also. They hung in there, they played solid defense. Big play to the sideline by Watts, but the defense stiffened enough. Field goal. This may be the big drive of the game right here. Still a quarter to go, but an all-important drive coming up for both teams. Florida State to reestablish itself as the team to catch. And Clemson would love another stop. Tommy West looking on as David Richardson. Set to kick it away. Remain Stringer and Lavernius Coles back deep this time. They hit a line drive picked up at the 10 by Stringer. Touch back against the grain. Trying to work his way outside and finally did. Nice return by Stringer. That's just a killer. You're trying to hold that ball to the, between the 20 and 25 yard line. You try a pooch kick, one bounce and can't get coverage and that ball's out to the 44. And Stringer takes it 434 out to the 44 yard line. First down there. You can see Clemson, they don't huddle. They don't huddle whether no matter how, whether Florida State huddles or not, they're never in a huddle, so right. they don't care. They're spread all over the field. Yep. Travis Miner in the Florida State backfield now. Remember, as Dean said, Feaster are checking his ribs in the locker room. And Gooch has not been effective today. 
Busby on first down, getting some pressure. Runs up out of the pocket, evade, evades a tackler, and somehow he got around Raheem Abdullah and got out of bounds with his life. That was pretty fancy footwork yeah, by number 12. I, I would say Busby is a pretty big guy, 220 pounds, the young offensive line. Let's see if there's a lot of pressure. The pressure is pushed around Busby this time. No one up and down field, and he gets through Abdullah that time, and Busby shows that that's a good enough play. Five yards on a scramble is a very successful play. That'll force Clemson to bring some pressure, and here it comes. Right here, it's going to come from the corner. They've got eight up close. And it's second and five. Here they come. Here they come as Gary said. Oh, that's Busby intentional grounding. Threw it away. That's intentional grounding. No flags. There's no one even near that. Now you watch. The officials will talk and the flag will come out. There it goes. You call that one, Gary. <laughs> and, and that's the proper way to do it. The linesman will talk to the referee. They'll confer. They'll say there's no one in the area. Was the quarterback out? You see, when this ball is thrown, he's got it. And the ball will go out there, and there's nobody out there. Nobody in that area. No FSU. <laughs> that means there's a penalty. Pass was being pressured. There was no eligible receiver in the area. I like the way you said it, but we got two explanations. Yeah, well, no FSU. <laughs> Shorthand, you know. Less than a minute and left. And in the could, third. You could just see Reggie Herring thinking like we were. Can't put pressure on him with four guys. Let's bring the house. Let's attack the whole game. If we're going down, we're going down going after these guys. Remember, this is his alma mater. He's coaching against ex-Florida State linebacker. He looks like he's ready to play today. Third and long. They'll go zone now. Busby. Half roll. Now sets and goes deep middle. Got a man. There, it's Warren, and he dropped it. That's the easiest catch of the day, and he didn't hold it. Remember what Reggie Herring said. We need some home human error from Florida State to win this game. A double move to the outside. Stop, look back, and go. Fox comes across, but this should have been caught oh. all the way. Human error. There's nothing you can do about it. Bobby Bodden said about Warwick. Sometimes he just lacks concentration for a second. He dropped a key pass last week, even though it was a route over Maryland, right. and he didn't play much the remainder of that game because of that drop. He just dropped one wide open. Mark Rick told me also he makes the big plays, but not the easy ones. Florida State's got a punt. They've got a good one. Tony Horn waits on it at the 15. Broke one tackle. Tony Horn. Tony Horn to the 30. Nice return. Again, let's just beat you into this thing. Why this game is close. Clemson underlined and Tommy West underlined all week. If we don't at least tie in the special teams, we can kiss this game goodbye. And right now, Clemson is fighting tooth and nail to stay even in the passing game, in the, in the special teams game, and they are. Clemson comes out to the 30. And a first down. A toss yeah. to Priester. And Priester takes some people with him for about five. Dean, it's getting intense down there. Yeah, it really has been. You might look for number seven. You know, one of the best receivers in the game is Tony Horn for Clemson. Coach Stockstill, with his eyes wide open, was working with him on the sideline about saying, you can get a post route that'll give us a touchdown. He says, give him a good flag move, and then you can cut it back in for a post route. Gary, maybe you can show us that on the old telescope. Oh, yeah, what do you I say? Can do that. huh? That's an easy one. All right. Just kind of bend to the outside and run towards those goalposts. We're going to have to wait for the fourth quarter for all of that. <laughs> we played three in Death Valley. Everybody's standing. End of the third quarter. Florida State leads 21 17. Set to start the fourth quarter. In Clemson, South Carolina, the Tigers trail 21 17. Gutsy performance by their quarterback. Playing on a bad foot. Elon Green sets the troops up. Second down at five from the 35. Raymond Priester. And he gets a tough three more yards. Remember, Brandon Streeter started this game at quarterback, and then Elon Green, even though we didn't expect to see him, had to come in. He did, Brad. And the only reason he's coming is because he paid the price 
from last Saturday all the way to this Saturday, getting four treatments a day, some of them late at night, getting up early in the morning. Obviously, he's maybe 70, 50, 60, 70 percent. When we saw him Thursday, I said, no way. Yep. He was like less than 50 percent. But there was a guy that was ready for his teammates, and he's coming through. Fred Hoover, the head trainer at Clemson, said we'll have to wait and see. Maybe he'll put a miracle off on Saturday. Ooh. Priester crushed in the backfield by Tony Bryant as we check in with John Saunders. For the second consecutive week, the Burger King, Burger, Burger King play of the day involves Iowa's Tavian Banks. 82 yards on this carry, 131 yards on the day on 19 carries, four touchdowns. He has 10 rushing touchdowns on the season, 648 yards on the season thus far, rolling 56. Back to you, Brad. What a player. Don't underestimate Tavian Banks. He was Nebraska's number one recruit a few years ago. Laird to punt. High kick. Warwick waiting on it at the 10. Warwick got the corner. He might go. The punter to beat. Reverses field inside the 30. Warwick is going to score. 90 yards touchdown. Sometimes he can't make the easy plays, but boy, can he make the big play. Can't punt the ball any better, but that was their worst punt coverage of the day. No one gets outside over here and forces them back to all the stuff. Troy Saunders got a great block to the outside. Might have been a clip towards the end of it, but no way Warwick's going to get stopped by a punter. He runs through that arm tackle. Looked about like me the way I tackle. <laughs> Troy Saunders comes up, gets his face in the way of a block right there, and Peter Warwick is having a Heisman day of himself. Extra point is up by Gramatica and good. And that was the fear. Remember a year ago with a 79-yard punt. This time, it's a 90-yarder. Peter Warwick, almost 300 yards of Florida State's package today. Here's the last one. 90 on a punt return, weaving his way through traffic and then turning on the speed. And you add that to what he's done receiving today, and it's been quite a show. He's one of those guys, two-time high school state champion, played high school quarterback, just a tremendous athlete. Waited his turn, didn't want to get redshirted in 1995. He and Randy Moss were supposed to be the receivers of the future. Moss transfers. Warwick, unfortunately for Clemson, didn't. <laughs> you knew where I was going with that, didn't you? Yes, I did. <laughs> Janikowski to kick. There's the big fella, and that's Tony Horn. Oh, he'd love to return the favor with a big kick return. But he's not going to have a chance. chance. I don't think so. Almost out of the end zone again. So it's going to be Clemson from the 20. This that, kid's got uh, some kind of leg. Yeah, and that just takes the, just all out of you. You get a, you play great offense, you play great defense. One third and short, they stop you, and all of a sudden they put seven points the other way on the board. Let's check in with Dino on the sideline. Well, another player's out, guys. Free safety number 12, Demarco Fox, is out of the ball game. Trainer told me he was knocked silly. Which made me think, Gary, if you and I had ever been tested for a silly <laughs> right. test, we may have never right. had a career. Still, which, still. Which I really didn't anyway. You know what I think they ought to do, Dino? What's that? Put Peter Warwick back there. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. He's done everything else. First down and down, Elon Green's got to work from down 11 and in some trouble. And probably a holding call to boot here. Flags fly in. As Elon Green is working from the shotgun and gets up, as you see, favoring that injured foot well it's like shark smelling blood right now with this pass rush watch wadsworth come inside on a stunt this time if raymond priester doesn't make the block big 85 is going to block the quarterback priester comes across and pushes him by but there's nothing he can do holding on the outside that time i think it was jerry johnson was held but the pass rush now might be too much for clemson 
They declined the penalty because they came up with a five-yard loss anyway, so they'll just leave it down alone. I'll tell you what, if you would have got that sack, they might be running over Mickey Andrews and sacking him if they take a sack away with a penalty. <laughs> <laughs> they want their stats. That's right. We're under 13 minutes. Clemson has an improved passing game, but it's not to the level to play when they're behind against this type of team. Again, Florida State, 10 guys up close. It looked like both the left tackle and the defense moved almost simultaneously. We'll see if it's going to be called on Butler. The tackle looked like he came out of his stance. I thought Roland Seymour that time came into the neutral zone first, and then the tackle moved. You're right. Jeez, I'm having a good game. I really, really are. Not as good you as really Peter Warwick, but I'm really having a pretty good game. Hey, that foot out of the end zone thing, that <laughs> sets you up for, for a week or so. Is it? Yeah, your job is safe for yeah, a week. 56 just jumped out on me. <laughs> I can go another week. There goes another injured player, too. It's Corey Simon, yeah. defensive tackle. Now, you might be worried, but Florida State has, like, five guys behind them that are just waiting for Corey Simon to go down so they can show everybody how good they are. So that takes it back to the original line of scrimmage. So it's second and ten. Again, Green in the gun. Fire is complete to Watts. First down, Clemson across the 35. And he got about 17. Devin Smith a little bit slow to get up after making the hit. Clemson started things off. Brandon Streeter started the game at quarterback, and he takes it in from 32 yards out for the first score of the ball game. And then a high snap over his head. He tried to get it. Priester tried to get it. The guy that got it was number one, Sam Powered in the end zone with a fumble recovery. That was Florida State's first touchdown. And then Busby hooking up with his long-range pen pal Peter Warwick one of his acrobatic catches today and then Warwick just a few minutes ago took this punt a 52 yard punt took it at the 10 and then said see ya yeah you remember Brad when we were talking to Tommy West he said instead of getting 50 yard punts I'd settle for 35 yard punts straight up in the air With and no force, return. Him, force him to fair catch he really out kicked the coverage and the better athlete won and I'll tell you, you just put, if you want to do a highlight package, just follow that guy around today because whether he's fumbling, dropping passes, or making touchdowns, it's been all him. Yep. Shevin Smith being helped off. And meanwhile, after that catch by Watts, who took the big hit from Smith, he's shaking up. He's on the Clemson bench, and I, they've got a first down. I just hope Dino's okay. <laughs> Do you know you're all right down there, man? Hey, I'm doing fine. I'm cramping up, just running from sideline to sideline, checking on cramps. All right. You know, we got 30 down now. We got Simon down now. They said they had more cramps last week at home against Maryland where the field temperature was around 115 degrees. <laughs> Quick slant broken up. And a penalty marker. That That's going to be on Troy Saunders. Yeah. That's all right. I think they'll live with that one. They like that type of play coming from the secondary. Every time I say something about interference on Saunders, I know John's in New York thinking I'm talking about yeah, it. Are you going to do a highlight? <laughs> he throws his tie on real quick and gets ready to go, right? You don't and he suppose, says, on me? Yeah, you don't suppose he's got one of those clip-ons, do you? <laughs> Never. <laughs> Pass interference, defense, penalty at the spot of the foul, first down. So first down. By penalty, 11-point game with 12-10 remaining one of the, on Death Valley. One of the college rules that I don't like, an interference that happens 45 yards downfield, they bring it back and give them 15 yards. An interference on a one-yard pass, they give you one yard. Yep. You should still get a 15-yard penalty. That play might have popped for 40 yards. you got to call Dave Perry Monday. Oh, yeah, he loves me. Yeah, I know he does. From the gun, green middle is horn, and he's in a head-on collision with Dexter Jackson and Troy Saunders again. And he held on to it. And Tony Horn's closing in on a 100-yard day as a receiver. Well, Tommy Weiss said, I'd be disappointed if my offensive line doesn't at least stand up and fight the battle. Brad, I think they have. The pressure has been coming, but in its tough circumstances, if you take away the fumbled punt and the fumbled snap over their head, I mean, those are two big touchdowns by Florida State, but this offensive line for Clemson has hung in there all day. Second down and a matter of inches here. They stay at a four wide out look. All 11 guys are in your picture right there. There's nobody back. And now there's motion again on that left side between left tackle of Clemson and 
Roland Seymour, who jumped in early the last time. This one, I think, might go the other way. Dead ball, false start, offense. Matt Butler and Roland Seymour going at it over on that side. This one's against the offense, so Seymour knew what he was doing. Play comes in from the bench. Marcus Martin brings it in. And Elon Green will have a second down in a long five. At the 45, Clemson again with a four wide out group. Aaron, their bear look again. They're going to come. Quick one over the middle of the horn. He's got the first down. Tony Horn down 98 yards on eight catches. Well, as Dean told us, Stock still said, let's go to Horn. And Horn is who they go to. And Tony Horn is showing that he's willing to pay the price across the middle. Fake across the middle, and he's going to go deep. He's had 13 balls thrown to him in this game. He's been hit after the eight that he's caught. <laughs> That's what you call blowing your own horn, I guess. Yep, I think they have, but they're going to go deep before we know it here. First down at the 47. Is this the time? Down the middle to Horn again. Tony Horn inside the 20. Well, this time, instead of doing the slant, he faked the slant and went deep. You can almost see the thinking of the offensive coordinator. You got a young safety back in there as Florida State starts to rotate their secondary people. But hey, you throw the ball in front of you, we're going to go by you. It's just like basketball. One time I shoot the three, the uh, next time I drive to the basket. Horn says, is it a slant? Nope, I'm going deep this time. Third straight 100-plus receiving game, a school record just tied by Tony Horn with that catch. 128 on nine grabs today. You know why? Nilon Green's in the shotgun is because he can't move. Gonna move a little bit before he throws this one to the end zone. Walker, touchdown! <laughs> Brian Wofford in the end zone. It's 28 23. Now do you go for two here? I don't, but the side judge this time would like them to take a timeout. Dan Hogue, the sideline judge, is going to catch the cannon right in the Whoa. face that time. <laughs> he took a shot on that one. Our side judge is cannon fodder. You got it. I'll tell you what I would. If you don't make it, then Florida State can put the game away with a field goal. I kicked the extra point. <laughs> wow. That's what going a the extra mile. Huh? What a drive. Neilon Green, you can't give a guy more credit than that. Florida State is forced to take their last time out. Scoring drive. A 17-yard touchdown pass to Brian Wofford has put Clemson within five with 10-11 to go. On Memorial Stadium. I number 15 playing number five, tooth and nail. I think Clemson's safe. I don't think Peter Warwick is back there. <laughs> They've got Stringer and Coles back there. There they are. Right now, David Richardson would like to knock it right into the student section. He almost did. And Florida State will have to start from the 20. Good job on the kick. There's almost 82,000 people in this facility. I don't know anybody that's sitting except the tuba guys in the Florida right. State Band. Well, they, they can't stand. They got an excuse, yeah. right? And here comes the noise for the Tiger defense. in the valley. Busby, play action, wants it all on one play for Green, incomplete. Good coverage back there by Michael Allen. Fred, 
Dino told us DeMarco Fox is out. That means his backup is Chad Speck, a true freshman on the field in this big game. Number 31 is going to play free safety, and he is not the hitter or the athlete that DeMarco Fox is yet. Hasn't gone through the cat program. That's, That's right. right. He's still earning his paws. Right. On the other side for the Seminoles, remember Dee Feaster, bruised ribs. And that takes a threat away from the Knowles. Second and ten. Busby got a man out there. And it's who else? Warwick down the sideline. Warwick takes it. Touchdown. 80 yards. Dumbfounded. I have never seen so much air go out of such a big orange balloon in my life. I'll tell you how much, how dumbfounded we are. Everybody grabbed their media guides from Florida State. A mistake in the secondary that time. To the outside, I think it was Michael Allen. Stopped one second to the outside. Number 10. The ball, that was the hardest ball Busby threw all game. And there's no way Antoine Edwards or Chad Speck is going to catch him. Dramatic is pulled after. Follows just another dramatic performance by that guy. 249 yards receiving and two touchdowns. Yeah, and that doesn't count a 90-yard TD on a punt on top of that. I wonder what his all-purpose yards are in this game. He's at kickoff yard. I think it's about uh, 372, I'm guessing. Yeah, 372 all-purpose yards. A bust in the coverage, I think. And then it's a foot race, and you're not going to win it against number nine, I'm afraid. And how's the quarterback feel? Yeah, I'll take it. I threw it about 15, and he did the rest. But he threw it like a bullet that time. Yeah, he didn't lob it. He got it to him quickly. And Peter Warwick is not going to need a jet to fly home after this one. <laughs> Unless he's so tired, he never leaves Clemson. Wow. He's already the number three receiving game all time in Florida State history. Ron Sellers, who holds most of the single game receiving records, is the guy that he still may pass before this one's over. Well, why not? Right? I mean, the guy has made acrobatic catch after acrobatic catch. Remember, he had a fumble on a, ki a kickoff, or was it a punt? I don't know. It's been so long ago. <laughs> it was a punt return, yeah. and Clemson turned that into a field goal, but uh, he had the drop pass on that one where he was wide, wide open. open. Mm -hmm. He's just been all over the highlight. He's going to have to have an extra 30 minutes of Sports Center this week to punt. <laughs> Janikowski to kick. Unless he misses it, it probably won't be returned. It is returnable, maybe. Tony Horn, two yards deep. Tony Horn, and Tony Horn into the secondary now. Down the sideline for Tony Horn. How many big plays can one game have? Dexter Jackson saved a touchdown. 77 yards for Tony Horn. This is like McEnroe versus Bork. Warwick versus Horn. It's a tennis match out here. My serve now. Tony Horn gets the ball back and he said, uh-uh, no kicker gonna stop me. And the ball in the field gets turned upside down the other way. What a football game. The ACC has seen nothing like this. And Janikowski got a piece of him. And then right there, Jackson saved the touchdown, but it's first and 10. Clemson at the 23-yard line of Florida State. 9-29 left in the fourth quarter. Florida State by 10. Clemson trying to change that right here. And again, the left tackle came out of his stance, Matt Butler. Remember, they're using a silent count. And if the defensive players flinch, you're looking at him. You don't even hear the snap count. Dead ball, false start, offense. Matt Butler's had his hands full over there, working against Seymour most of the day. 
seventh Clemson penalty. Five of them that have been on the offense. They got to get that guy a quick breather and get him back out there. Tony <laughs> Horn. Already he's had his best yardage day as a receiver and just took a kickoff 77 yards. Clemson's going almost exclusively shotgun because Neilon Green can't move. Green pressure from the backside, throws a dart, almost caught, and then almost intercepted. Rod Gardner got his left hand on it. Neilon Green is showing that he can throw the ball with Florida State today. It's about a 35-yard strike that was just painting the black on the plate. Gardner just got his hand on it, and Cody, Tay Cody, almost came up with a deflection. If you're just joining us, you missed it. Shame on you. <laughs> 9:23 left. It's 35-25, Florida State. Tony Horns back in there. Penalty markers down, incomplete on the pass, and Neilon Green down. I think Wadsworth is offside this time. He beat the snap count, and I'm sure of it. Paycheck on this one, Brad. Thanks for using my <laughs> chips. <laughs> you play great with my chips. <laughs> so they'll walk it back where so it's going to be second you know, down and they're back to where horn can play he's That's got enough right. rest they had one five the other way one five this way and horn will be in there now Neilon green playing on a bad foot and playing gutsy football at the 23 the original line of scrimmage second down at 10. Elon Green throws outside. That one skipped off his hand. Sam Cowart was waiting there, covering. It's incomplete. Don't forget the Comfort Classic final round coming up tomorrow at 3 o'clock Eastern, 2 o'clock Central. The Comfort Classic Senior Golf at Brickyard Crossing Golf Course in Indianapolis. That's tomorrow on ABC Sports final round. It's third and 10 right here, Brad, and it's a 10-point game. If I'm Clemson, I think let's try that shovel pass or draw play. Because we got two plays? Let's no, I'm thinking field goal and make it a seven point game. Something conservative here. Green pumps once, runs out of time. Now they'll have to take the field goal. It's going to be fourth down and about 12. Absolutely. Good coverage that time by the Florida State secondary. Seymour coming in for Wadsworth, who's just out of gas. Fifth sack of the day by the Seminole defense. Fifth sack of the day, but I still say the Clemson offensive line has done their job. Bobby Bodden knows he's in a battle to try to win his 200th game for there's, Florida State. There's Wadsworth, who has put on a show today himself. And this is a huge three because this puts the pressure back on Florida State if they get it to be a seven point game. Matt Padgett this is a 43 yard field goal attempt it is crucial to the future of this fourth quarter for the Clemson Tigers from 43 and it pushed outside on him he missed it. Well see that's why I thought the call should have been something up inside where they could have got an easier shot. Florida State holds a missed field goal. It's still a 10-point game. If Clemson was five yards closer, they would have made this click, this field goal. But you don't think we work hard here? Watch our man Dino right here. Here he is. He's going to run in there and watch him run in and get the play. He's running in just to make sure those officials are right there. And he knew that that one missed. He takes a look, and that's why they call oh. it football is about a foot wide left. Dino don't cramp up down there. We need you man. <laughs> yeah. What do you need? 821 left. Hit in the backfield spinning off positive yardage that time for Abdullah the fullback. There has been very little ground game for Florida State again today. Right now they'd love to chew up eight minutes and head to Tallahassee. Well if they chew up eight minutes as Trey Thomas is limping right there at big number 70. If they chew up eight minutes against this defense on the ground, they deserve the win. 29 yards for Florida State on the ground today. They just got four from Abdullah. Second and six. They pull back Abdullah again. And a stop by Clemson. 
Ahmad Wilson is there. Abdullah. We had an Abdullah and an Abdullah. We had everybody but Abdullah the Butcher in on that play. <laughs> Here's where Florida State's lack of ability to run the ball could come up and bite them in a big game. Against the North Carolina, against the Florida, and against a team like this Clemson defense, they have to throw it. Third down hasn't been kind today. Wow, 0 for 9 in third down. Well, they haven't got that many, though. <laughs> That's true, and look out for number 9. Let me show you where he is before we just, let's, there he is, number 9. Yep. It's like circling Gordy Howe down here. Third and 5. Think Busby's not looking for him. He is. Warwick. He's out of bounds. He is. He made the catch, but it was out of bounds. It's fourth down. Why not throw the ball to him? It only makes sense, but that makes him 0 for 10. And had they kicked that field goal, that would have been a huge series right there. That's what Warwick's done today. 372 all-purpose yards. <laughs> Horn says, man, I had my best game, 277. No one's talking about it. Boy, I wonder who our Chevrolet well, players of the game are today. He still has a chance. <laughs> He's back there. <laughs> Horn is back there to get this punt. After all the punt, not a good one. He's the fair catch it. And Tony does spare. He didn't oh, he fair did. catch it. He took it, and he's tackled. Or did he call fair catch? No, Flags he didn't. Down now. They were within five yards of the catch. I'm sorry, two yards. So the penalty will give Clemson even better field position, we assume, that that's going to be the call. See, that's the type of punts that Clemson needed in this game. Uh -huh. Real high floaters, nothing pretty, just 30 yards down the field. Interference with the catch, and the penalty moves it out near the 39-yard line. First and 10 for the Tigers. So the best way for Clemson to go here again will be shotgun as Florida State's done that today. And so have the Tigers. Green in trouble. Down he goes. Wadsworth. Wadsworth's there, so is Billy Rhodes. I'll tell you what they're doing. They're lining to the outside, Daryl Bush, and then Wadsworth comes on a stunt inside. They've done the same stunt about 10 times in this game. And Wadsworth, when he gets ahead of steam, they just can't hold him back. 6.20 remaining in the ball game in the fourth quarter. Clemson needs a touchdown and field goal to tie. And right now, they need second down and 19 to go. Quick slant. And again, it works. This time, it's Lawyer. And Lawyer. Goes outside and got a first down. He pleaded his case all the way to the sidelines for the first down. That was the jailbreak, jailbreak screen in college football. You throw the ball behind the line of scrimmage, and you see Watts is hurting again. He's cramping up, I believe, but Tony Horn had a big block on the play. He was over there pumping him up, pumping him up, and I guarantee you he is in immense pain. If he were to win this game, it would be a Cinderella score. Boy, oh, I guess. First down in Florida State territory. Elon Green, sideline, overshot his man. Shevin Smith was back there covering Rod Gardner. And it's incomplete. Gary, you played healthy and you played hurt, and it's uh, hard enough when you're healthy. You no, know, it's amazing. We watched an Elon in practice on Thursday. And the main reason I didn't think he would play is he wasn't even out on the field for a lot of the plays. He was standing on the sideline signaling in plays. And usually if you think you have a shot, you stay near the huddle and mentally go through every play as it's run. I, I really am sitting here in amaze watching him play. Sacks today by Florida State, six of them. And Green rifles intercepted. And it's Tay Cody going the other way. And that might be the final gasp, although there's a penalty marker down in the secondary. So just hold on a second. Cody took it all the way back on the Clemson side of the field, but a penalty marker way back. That came from the back judge that time, Virgil Valdez, and you wonder if there wasn't too many men on the field the way he threw that. Or maybe defensive holding. They'll sort it out. And here's the call. Pass interference. Oh, wow. Florida State. They get the ball back. Now first down. 
That's a huge play. Don't forget, time permitting, the thrifty Car Rental Post Game Report. John and Todd will be along with all the scores and highlights from today's action. This we game, got action right here, I'll tell you yeah, that. Yeah, this game won't die. I can't imagine that one. That was thrown. That ball was not catchable by anybody but Cody that time. I don't see how that could have been pass interference. Oh, that ball wasn't even close. That ball was picked off 10 yards, and they called it on Troy Saunders. That ball was picked off 10 yards in front of that interference penalty. I think that's a bad call. There's the penalty story. First down, meanwhile, for Clemson. And that one's almost intercepted, too. Intended for Lawyer, and Saunders had that one played beautifully. He knew it was coming, the quick slant. They've tried that a lot today. So it's second and 10. Clock stop, 538 left in the fourth. 35-25 Florida State. Number five team in the country clinging for their lives here to a 10-point lead in Death Valley. Here comes the stunt inside by Wadsworth right here. He's going to come inside. Watch him. Whoop, moving again. Left side offense or right side defense. That's been the dance that's been going on between Seymour and in this case, Bundren. You can see it. Seymour went into the neutral zone and Bundren reacted. I think it's going to be on Florida State. The only thing Bundren may have moved was his hands. Offside on Florida State. That's right. It's like snapping the ball by the center when somebody's in the neutral zone. If you flinch at that time, here's the stunt again. Watch Wadsworth going to come inside on this play with Bush lined up outside of him. If Bush goes on the line of scrimmage right here, Wadsworth's coming inside. Green will try to roll a little bit, throw on the run. Wofford's got it. Flags down. Wofford's got it first and goal. I think it's a face mask. If it is, the play stands. It's first and goal, Clemson. It's going to be half the distance to the goal from there as Neilan Green threw another strike. <laughs> I'll tell you, this game has got everything. Samari roll on the coverage, but the ball is put in a perfect spot. Roll comes in and grabs the shoulder pads. Oh, I don't know. I didn't see a face mask there, did you? It was his jersey. A couple of questionable calls on this drive. Well, they move it an extra couple of yards. Here's the end of the play. He's got him by the jersey. It looks like the face mask, but it is not. Either way, it's first and goal, Clemson. Clemson can't waste time. They need to score very quickly. And, and they waste, take a timeout. They wasted a timeout, which is worse. 519 remaining. Don't go anywhere. It's first and goal, Clemson. Head referee Jim Knight just went over there and told him to stop playing. So a bit of a hush. There you see him right there in the end zone. Over Death Valley. So Tommy West got his point across. I tell you what, there might be a little bit of quiet now, but two yards from now, it won't be quiet in here. Clemson can get it in the end zone. Clemson needs to use their two-point plays right now, their package of two-point plays, because they have to score quickly. They can't let a minute and a half go off the clock. They come up to the line, first and goal. Austin Priester and Witherspoon in a power eye. They fake it. They want to throw. Green's in trouble, and down he goes. A huge sack by Darrell Bush. Lamont Hall, the tight end, is saying he was held. There are no flags, and the seventh sack of the day is a big one. Brad, you're exactly right. Watch him tackle number 82, Lamont Hall. That's who the ball was going to go to. Seymour, number 56, grabs him by the ankles. It was a delay to the tight end. They missed the call, the referees, and Bush made the play. Good eye, Brad. At the nine now, it's second and goal. Where's Tony Horn in the lineup? Yeah. Slot to the left for him. Again, the shotgun for Neilan Green. Here comes everybody. Green in trouble. Throws to the end zone for Walker. Almost intercepted by Samari Roll. 
they got to help Nelon Green up. And there it shows you Dexter Jackson let him have it, and he just helped Nelon Green up as if to say, man, you're playing a great game. You're awesome, man. It is third and goal. Obviously, two down territory. I think they had the ball down there with 540 to go. Look at there's now 427 to go. So it's cost them a minute and 13 seconds already, and they haven't come up with the touch. You know, maybe I shouldn't say it's two down territory. They need a field goal someplace I, along I, here, too. I agree with you. I think you got to kick the field goal. You've got to make it a one possession game. Four wideouts, third and goal from the nine. Florida State leading by 10 with 427 left in the fourth. Green waits and waits across the middle. He found his intended receiver, Tony Horn, but it's only at about the six-yard line. Absolutely, field goal game now. Kick the field goal. Here they come. They'll be spotting this one. Great goal line stand by Florida State that time. Seymour got away with one down there, grabbing the tight end. But that's what you're taught to do. Remember, Paget missed one from 43. This is a 24-yard field goal attempt, and they've got to have this one. Kevin Laird to hold. Paget to try to make it a seven-point game does. 3:42 remaining in the fourth quarter. It's fifth-ranked Florida State 35, 15th-ranked Clemson 28. What a dandy. The Atlantic Coast Conference could be proud of this one today. And Padgett didn't miss this opportunity. He didn't make it by much either. Tucked it inside the right <laughs> upright. 54-yard drive at eight plays. A little over three minutes. And now can they get the ball back? That's what the orange-clad faithful are wondering, along with us, I guess. They can get the ball back, but they only have one timeout. So they're likely, if... Florida State runs the ball and doesn't pick up a first down, only to have about a minute and a half left in the game when they get it back. The key phrase there, maybe, if Florida State runs the ball, they haven't been able to yet today. Well, I think Florida State has to run the ball here. They have to play the clock game. They've got the number one rated defense in the, in, in the country, even though it's been shredded pretty good today <laughs> by Clemson. And if they have to, they have to punt the ball on fourth down and start over. Tommy West, he's got the spit flying. He's into this game as he's yelling out instructions to the guys. And right now, remember, kickoff coverage is probably the main deal that has to happen. They can't afford this ball to go out to the 40-yard line. And right now, Florida State is thinking maybe they'll onside it. They've got 10 guys within 15 yards of the kicker. I wouldn't. But I'll tell you what, with that in mind, look out for number nine. He's waiting back at the 15. I would, I would kick it to the side of the field down around the 10. Boy, you're, number nine is going to add to his yardage, isn't it? I think so. <laughs> David Richardson to kick. And we're getting ready to find out if it's a deep kick or not side. Good job by Florida State protecting, forcing the long kick. He'll kick away. Warwick's going to track it down four yards deep, and he does maybe the wisest thing in a brilliant performance today he took a knee don't you know he wanted to turn around oh, and take I, off the other way I did I wanted to watch him go the other <laughs> way <laughs> what a show he's put on Bobby Bowden trying to win number 200 at Florida State number 273 overall he is in a fight with the Tigers right now it's 35 to 28 Florida State by seven well, Florida State should run the ball. That's probably the strategy. The bad news is they ran the ball today 16 times for 30 yards. And even worse than that, their leading carrier is that guy right there, Thad Busby. Not a good sign. From the 20. Miners the tailback. He gets the pitch. End around time. They fake it. He keeps it. And out to the 21-yard line. Only a gain of one. Tony Planton. Got over there to help on the tackle. Travis Miner, a true freshman, in for the injured D. Feaster. The Clemson defense, you talk all about Florida State's defense. The Clemson defense came into this game only giving up 69 yards a game. And today they've got, what, 32 yards. There you go. You see it's been a balanced game the whole game. Florida State has put two touchdowns. Well, let me rephrase that. Peter Warwick has put out two <laughs> touchdowns. Second down and nine. 
Tigers defense needs a big play. Busby under a blitz. Deep for Warwick. He made the adjustment, but not the catch. Damon Ward stayed with him this time. Damon Ward interfered that time, and he got away with one. That was the stop fade that time. Bump and run to the outside, and watch number 22 grab Warwick. Now, Busby and Warwick know this ball's going to be thrown short. Watch the grab. Now, the jersey all over. You can see the distorted nine. And again, the officials... Both, both teams are having good games. The third team out there, officials, are not. Third down and nine. You know the third down conversion chart on Florida State today. They're over. And if they don't get this one, this place will come unglued. Busby. Pressure. Deep for Green. He can't find it. Yes, he did. What a catch. That's incredible. Over the wrong shoulder with the outside arm. One-handed it to maybe put this game away. 40 yards. I didn't think he could possibly turn his head one more time to make that catch. He was looking over his left shoulder back to Busby as the ball was thrown, and then it went Willie May style, and he catches it with one hand, cradles it with his left arm. Gee. Wow. E.G. Green has been quiet most of this game as Peter Warwick has been the man, but that was a game-winning catch. First down, Florida State at the Clemson 39. Incredible, incredible game. 225 remaining in the fourth quarter. It's a seven-point difference. Clemson has only one timeout left. Fullback, Abdullah, about a yard. And that'll work in under two minutes. If you're Thad Busby now, you're telling the offensive line, no holding. You're telling your running backs, ball possession more than yards. You don't want to pull a Wisconsin in this situation and try to go for a first down when you only need to control the clock to have this game end. Ball possession is what you need. You can hand it off, but you have to be careful of every handoff. That must be with that catch by E.G. Green, by the way. A career-high performance of 332 yards in the air. Toss to Miner. And Miner got it to the 35, stays inbounds. And we're down to 125. I think Clemson needs to take their time out now because Florida State is likely to throw after third down. There it is. With 119 left. The last timeout for Clemson. 119 remaining. It's 35 to 28. Remember, Florida State has lost only one game ever since their inception into the ACC. That was to Virginia. They're clinging to a touchdown lead here. I think Florida State runs the ball. Clemson, of course, must stop. And then it's up to the referee how quickly he spots the ball to determine how much left is in this game. Third down and five. Busby, toss sweep. And a great open field tackle by Abdullah. They still haven't started the 25-second clock. They still haven't started it. 106. Look at how much time is going. Still, still looking around. Still looking around. A good change by Florida State. It started right now. About, about 11 seconds. About 12 to 11 seconds came off the clock as everyone looked around and turned around to get the change set. And now Florida State will take a... Delayed penalty, they'll run it all the way to zero before they snap the ball, and they'll take a five-yard penalty. That's what they're waiting on right now. We're down, as you can see, the game clock is going to hit a half minute right. Not quite, 31. See, that's what a lot of people would like to go to the 40-second clock, where that clock, like the pros, is started right away when that guy goes down, and that way it takes the referee out of that mixture. And I'll tell you what Bobby Bowden is saying to the punter right now. Number one, son, catch it. Number two, I don't care if you kick it 12 yards. <laughs> kick it quick. There's one guy he didn't get to talk to, and that's the snapper on the play. Right. And I'm sure he did say son. <laughs> Clay Ingram, 73, is the guy who's got the sweaty palms right now. And I think Florida State absolutely needs the block kick to win, have any chance. Chevrolet players of the game, was there a doubt? 
Peter Warwick and Tony Horn would win it. Everly donates $1,000 to each school's general scholarship fund to reward outstanding students for their academic achievements and assist those in financial need. Here's the punt of the day for Florida State. And it was not a great one. Didn't have to be. And it takes a Clemson roll. That helps the Tigers a little bit out to about the 26-yard line. 19 seconds is what the Tiger offense has to work with. One of the better football games I've done in my seven years of uh, doing college football. We had a great Virginia victory over Florida State. Uh, we had you know, the Wisconsin Northwestern game. We had Northwestern beat Michigan. This has been as good as we've seen because of the great plays being made by these tremendous athletes on both teams out here. Very well coached game. The players came through. The defenses came through. Hard hitting throughout. 19 seconds. Neilon Green rolling. Throws on the run. Complete. And out of bounds. My lawyer only got about six yards, though. Green has been a warrior out there today. As tough as that defensive line is out there, he has been tougher. He's playing on basically one and a half legs, and he has showed that quarterbacks are tough. <laughs> <laughs> Without a doubt, he's played on guts and guile today, and he's got a couple of plays left. They need to get the ball to about the 50-yard line so they can throw the next one into the end zone. Green running for his life. Throws on a run. Incomplete. Way over by the Florida State bench. And now we're down to eight seconds. Bobby Bodden has never lost to Clemson. Looks like Bobby's limping. Is he cramping up just a I bit as he walks back and forth? I think he is. Actually, Bobby has lost to Clemson, six and two against Clemson, but not as an ACC member. Yeah. I think he's limping. Well, if he limps to his 200th victory in he Florida State care. history, he'll take it. He did not die in Death Valley. Nope. That's all he cares about. A near-death experience, maybe. It has been. Barring a miracle here. Eli Green sets up, throws it as far as he can. And it's broken up. And we still have one play left. Yeah, bad news for Elon Green is they got time for one more. Yeah, and he has to pick himself up one more time. What a valiant effort by the Clemson Tigers. And I don't know, you know, they came in ranked 15th. It's going oh, to be no. hard to take their ranking away. Absolutely not. They can't dr drop. Anybody who drops them below 15 right now just are not following the games. Right. Because if that's the difference between, you know, a top five team and a 15 team, this is as good as I've seen. Final play of the ball game. <laughs> Clemson would need magic from yeah. Howard's Rock and a lot more right here. Yeah, Final they, play of the game. They need the lateral play. Stanford Cal. They're going deep for Wofford. Out there, it's picked off. Cody picks it off. It's all over. Congratulations to Bobby Bodden on number 200 as the head man of Florida State, but he had to fight Tommy West Tigers for it.